Hello, a very good morning. You are very welcome along to Ireland M on Virgin Media One. It is th- still not September, Thursday, the 31st of August. We have so got. We're still in summer. We are still in summer, technically. We have got movie reviews, unusual news, and tips for organising school shoes. Isn't that what you Just want to what we me? need right we now. Go. From the greedy to the gory, we're going to be rounding up the weird and wonderful stories that are making the news worldwide. And with the latest news that the doll will have an extra 14 TDs and more, more TDs. constituencies. Just what you want, more people to interview. We'll be finding out how these changes will affect you at home. We'd love to get your opinion on it. Do we need more TDs? Is that what you want in your local area? 0896 111 We'll be discussing that at 735. Plus, Belfast actor Roisin Gallagher is going to be here talking love, loss and leading roles. Alan is all the way over there. What else is coming all up, my friend? All the way over here in the kitchen because plenty more to come throughout the morning. Uh, we've got a saucy speciality in the kitchen. Look, Alberto Rossi is already setting up because he's going to make us a beautiful pasta dish a little later on. We've also got some top organising tips to tackle clutter as the kids go back to school this week and with the kids going back to school and we want to see the pictures of them going back to school so send them in to us on whatsapp 0896 111 and don't forget we need permission from your tots legal guardians so get those pictures into us we'd love to see them now Derek talking about school Derek is at a school this morning just down the road in Crumlin how are you getting on Derek not too far away at all, and I've got my bag on my back because I'm heading back to school myself this morning. Uh, it's a pretty wet one out there if you are heading back for the first day of school. Uh, heavy rain at the moment, in fact, through parts of Offaly, Leash, Kilkenny, in around North Tip. But that's what we're up to. We're heading off to Loretto Primary School uh, this morning, the junior school here. Uh, so lots of fun, lots of tears, and hopefully lots of smiles. It's going to be a very, very cute morning coming your way later on this Thursday. Class, Derek. Looking forward to that. It's always a bit of fun. Hopefully, uh, you can interview a few kids. They normally give us a few crackers. Yeah, a few crackers. That's exactly uh, what do. it means. Yeah. Uh, you are with Ireland AM this morning. Hope you're having a good morning. It's time now to go over to the Virgin Media News Hub. Here is Geraldine Lina. Thanks, Byrne. Good morning. The first of four funerals for the young victims of last week's car crash in Clonmel in County Tipperary will take place this afternoon when 18-year-old Nicole Murphy is laid to rest. Funerals for the three other victims will take place in the coming days. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A community still coming to terms with the enormity of the loss of four young people. 24-year-old Luke McSweeney, his sister Grace, and her friends Zoe Coffey and Nicole Murphy, all gone in an instant. The girls were on their way to celebrate getting their Leaving Cert results last Friday, when the shocking tragedy occurred in Clonmel and more tough times are ahead for the heartbroken families and friends of the victims as the first funeral gets underway today. Nikki Murphy's Requiem Mass will take place at St John the Baptist Church in Kilcash at midday. She will be buried afterwards in the adjoining cemetery. Funerals for Luke and Grace will take place tomorrow while Zoe will be laid to rest on Saturday in what has been a devastating week on Tipperary's roads. Trish Laverty, Virgin Media News. Gardaí are making a fresh appeal for drivers to slow down and avoid distractions in the car, warning that driving is the most dangerous activity any person can do on any given day. It's already been a lethal year for on our roads with 125 lives lost so far, an increase when compared to both last year and 2019 before the pandemic. There were 24 fatalities in the month of August and 11 in the past week alone. That includes a crash in Cashel in County Tipperary on Tuesday, which claimed the lives of two grandparents and their three-year-old grandson and a collision in Port Leash yesterday in which a three-year-old girl was killed. Around one third of those killed on our road so far this year were young people under the age of 25. We have definitely seen a lot of passengers. Um, I think 29 road deaths so far have been passengers and vehicles. People who have no say in what has actually happened in relation to road traffic collision. But they do have a say. If you're the passenger in a vehicle, you have a say and you have control over the driver of the vehicle. You can speak up. You can ask the driver to slow down if you're not feeling safe. You can ask them to drive a little bit more carefully. Drivers also need to take responsibility. It's not just themselves. It's the other people in in, in their, their vehicle. 
Motorists are facing a hike in fuel costs from midnight tonight as excise rates increase. The move will mean petrol will rise by 7 cent a litre and diesel will go up by 5 cent a litre. It's the second of three planned increases in excise to reverse a temporary cut brought in in March of last year when prices rose sharply as a result of the war in Ukraine. Motorists may not see an increase immediately as it may take some time for some forecourts to pass the rise on. And the US Hurricane Adalia has been downgraded to a tropical storm and is now moving through South Carolina, but is still bringing with it heavy rain and winds of up to 60 miles an hour. It made landfall in Florida yesterday as a Category 3 storm, causing flooding in some areas and leaving 400,000 people in Florida, Georgia and South Carolina without power. It was the strongest hurricane to make landfall in the region in more than 125 years. The Society of St. Vincent de Paul says there's been a 20% decrease in calls for help with back-to-school costs as a result of the free primary school book scheme. However, the charity has seen a 14% rise in the number of calls overall, with over 135,000 received so far this year. The most common requests are for help with food and energy bills as a result of the cost-of-living crisis. St. Vincent de Paul says secondary school costs and voluntary contributions continue to put a significant pressure on families. Soldiers who stage a coup in Gabon have named an army general as the country's transitional leader. The president of Gabon is still under house arrest after soldiers seized power in the Central African country. Their supporters have been celebrating on the streets after the coup attempt against President Ali Bongo, whose family has been in power for 55 years. Several members of his family are under investigation for corruption in France. And finally for now in news, a giant panda cub has been born in Russia for the very first time. The Moscow Zoo has announced that the giant panda Ding Ding gave birth to a cub last week. The new arrival weighs about 150 grams and is being monitored closely but is said to be doing well. Now here's Derek with a look at the first weather. You need to be chill to handle Irish weather. That's why chill sponsor weather updates on Virgin Media. Thanks, Jaron. A very good morning. We're live here from Crumlin on Dublin's south side this Thursday morning and coming up over the coming hours. We're off to visit Loretto Junior School. First day back to school for so many kids right across the country. So we're expecting lots of tears, lots of smiles and lots of fun and frolics over the coming hours. So do hang with us for that. Now, we're getting past seven o'clock here together. Let's pull up the blinds on the last day of August. And if you are, in fact, heading back to school later on today, it is uh, this morning. It's a pretty wet one out there. Uh, plenty of heavy rain now co uh, covering uh, counties Roscommon through parts of Leash, Offaly, Kildare, Kilkenny to Nortip and uh, parts of Wicklow and Wexford in the firing line as well. So stay nice and dry. Keep the rain gear at the ready if you are heading out the door uh, with the smallies now in the coming hours in those uh, light to locally moderate westerly winds variable at times. Now right across today in fact we will see plenty of showers across today and once again some of those leaning on the heavy side. So brightest spells pulling through through parts of the west as your Thursday progresses and top valleys on the heavy and humid side out there today. A little bit of a muggy feel in the air for the last day of the month at 16 to 20 even 21 degrees in some spots. Finally then tonight under those light winds uh, we will see those showers die off. Uh, elsewhere clearer skies will begin to develop allowing for some patchy mist, a taster of fog as well as we settle our way into your Friday morning with overnight lows there back to 8 to 13 degrees. So that's how we're shaping up here in a dry and settled Crumlin at the moment. We'll be back again live at 7.35. You need to be chill to handle Irish weather. That's why Chill sponsor weather updates on Virgin Media. Coming up on Ireland AM, we're going to have some of the stories that are making the news today. Yes, that's all coming up after this short break. We'll see you back here very shortly. It's time now to take a look at this morning's papers. We're going to start with the Irish Times. It's headline, smaller parties face pressure as Dáil grows by 14 TDs. The Electoral Commission proposes an, an increase of constituencies by 4 to 43 due to population increase. This will mean the Dáil will have 174 TDs after the next general election. Dysfunctional and unsafe. New report lays bare crisis in mental health care. That's the front page of the Irish Independent. 
A series of reports shows the extent of the crisis nationwide. Dr. Susan Finnerty's nationwide examination made 49 recommendations for change. The examiner leads with urgent appeal, 125 road deaths and 600 serious crashes in 2023. The chairwoman of the RSA, Liz O'Donnell, is seeking increased penalty points for dangerous driving as it emerged that 125 people have died on the roads this year, an increase of 25 on the same period in 2022. The star leads with no country for bold men. Australia, Canada and New Zealand won't let Jonathan Dowdell, who gave evidence against the monk, into the countries over his crimes and IRA links. The Herald's front page, teens attack couple with a machete. A delivery driver has been left with a broken elbow and cuts to his arms and back after he and his wife were attacked on a Sunday stroll in Clonny, West Dublin, after they tried to stop the teens beating a dog. The toddlers among tragic crash victims is the top story on the Daily Mail. Two toddlers, Rosaline McDonough and Tom O'Reilly, both aged three, have died in separate car accidents in the space of 24 hours in what is becoming a year of carnage on Irish roads. The Mirror also covers this story with Stop the Carnage. And finally, the sun leads with its cruel world we are living in. A family has been left in mourning after a devastating crash killed a three-year-old boy and his grandparents in Cashel County Tipperary at 9pm on Tuesday night. And join us to discuss a lot of those stories on the front of the papers this morning is political editor Hugh O'Connell with the Irish Inde or Sunday Independent. Good morning to you, Hugh. Morning, Thanks so much for joining us. Um, we have to start with the... Yeah, another road death last night. A, a, a three-year-old yeah. girl um, has in Port Leash. In Port Leash. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just been horrendous. Yeah, it's, Twenty-four it's, hours, a horrendous couple of it's weeks a, it's a, and months. It's kind of a summer of tragedy really yeah. on our roads, and I, I think that this is the moment at which we, you know th this kind of story, in my experience, starts to enter the sort of political fray where people are asking, well, what are the politicians going to do about this? What's the government going to do about this? Because road deaths in this country, which we worked very hard to reduce yeah. um, over the last probably 20 years. I think if you look at that kind of span, um, there was um, a concerted effort to, to make the roads safer and it had an effect, but road deaths are, are creeping up at an alarming level this year. We've had 125 already. It's, I think, it's substantially more than we had at this period last 22 year. 22 more. 22 more last year, I think 25 more than 2019, which is, a, a, you know, we don't count the pandemic years, I suppose. Um, and so, uh, you know, and, and not only that, like 600, I think, serious injuries as a result of, of road crashes uh, or 600 serious ro road incidents. Mm -hmm. I was really struck by the image on the front of the examiner today of Garda Superintendent Kieran Rowan speaking in Cashel yesterday, having been in Clonmel uh, last Saturday speaking about what happened with the four leaving or the three leaving cert students and the, and the 20 year old um, who, who crashed there yeah. and all lost their lives. He looks a bit broken, doesn't he? He does, he does. And the, the, these communities are broken by, by these sure. tragedies. Um, and as I said, I, you know, this is, I think, where it enters the political fray, where you, know, you have Liz O'Donnell in the papers today, that the long-serving uh, chair of the Road Safety Authority yeah. saying, we need to do something about this, uh, or the chief executive, rather, of the Road Safety Authority saying, we need to do something about this. The government needs to look at things like lowering speed limits mm -hmm. and increase penalty points for road offences to deter motorists from speeding, from taking actions which put, put people at risk, people in the car, people outside the car, people in other cars. So I think we're going yeah, to see a concerted right. effort on that I front. I think now. something needs to happen then when you're seeing these numbers, yeah. at, you know, 25 above yeah. and 22 above, like, and certainly I mean, whenever a third of the deaths are people under the age yeah. of 25. Yeah. So like, you know, if you think you only get your license at what, 17, 18 yeah. mm. and a third, you know, so that's like- I think just, that, that might be where yeah. you see the, the, the kind of sector that might be targeted, the kind yeah. of area, the age group that might be targeted. Yeah. But ultimately, look, the government can only do so much in this yeah. area. This is about people driving more safely, maybe driving a bit less. And, yeah. um, you know, there's a big green push obviously as well. And um, obviously that's not possible in parts of rural yeah. Ireland. So. Look, we'll, we'll see what happens, but, but as I said, I think this is something now that you know, you're going to see a lot of government ministers asked about in the next, yeah. uh, and, next and week or two. I, it's just in the aftermath. This is a tragedy, and I suppose it's not about politics at the moment because so no. many communities are devastated yeah. by what's happened. Yeah. God bless them. I think exactly, and we have had to do this too many times yeah. on the show uh, mm. lately, but of course we do send our condolences uh, you know, to those families and particularly to Rosalie McDonough, oh. you know, her parents and family who died uh, yesterday just age three. Um, let's move on to another story, again, front of the Irish Independent this morning. Yeah, um, another that. fairly um, 
Well, a follow on from the damning statements we keep hearing coming out of the mm. mental health system and children's mental health system camps. Yeah. Uh, Shane Freeland's been doing great work on this. Mm. Uh, obviously, we had the situation in Kerry uh, last year, and this has opened a wider uh, mm -hmm. examination, I suppose, of camp services in this country. Um, and what it's identified, I think, if you read through uh, what Shane is writing today, is capacity and a lack of capacity and, and people working in the system who are under enormous pressure. Uh, you know, too, too many, pa they have too many patients, I guess, on their books because there's not enough uh, psychiatrists yeah. or, or mental health professionals in the area. Um, and that's having an effect of, of the service not being particularly well delivered. So, you know, you have... The consultants feel it's unsafe. Yeah, like, exactly. I that's mean, that, that's... crazy. That's, it is crazy. And I suppose, um, you know, again, this will be something that I think that we have to look at in terms of how can we get more people working in this system yeah. to make it safer. Um, it, because more and more children and adolescents are needing to access it, uh, but the, the service isn't up to standard. I mean, there was one case where I think uh, as someone was waiting... Uh, four days. Four days. In an so emergency, room. emergency referrals. Yeah. They're having to wait until the next psychiatrist was next on duty. So an emergency referral, they had to wait four days. Yeah. That's in Limerick, Clare, and North Tipperary. Yeah. Then in Cork and Kerry, there hasn't been a permanent consultant there yeah. since 2016. Yeah. And one psychiatrist covers 23 hours a week from Doha. Oh, from Doha in Qatar. Yeah. Tell you psychiatry. Um, so this is it's pretty Tell shocking. This is pretty shocking stuff. I mean, look, that that can oh my God. that can be useful, I suppose. But look, it's not ideal it that there isn't shows. a consultant in that area, yeah. you know, or, or a full time consultant in that area. So <clears> it's a big problem. It's frightening. It's challenging. And I think the, the, the bigger problem in the long term will be that uh, more and more parents will not turn to this service. Yeah. More children will turn away from this service. They might go private. Yeah. Uh, or they might not access it all, at all, which is the more all. detrimental. Uh, probably the more likely because of the yeah. cost but also the more detrimental outcome to, the, to these young it's people. It's truly yeah. awful, and we've had parents on the show talking about this and, and, and the crisis their children are facing. Uh, if you're involved in this, there's 49 recommendations that we heard a few months ago, and, and Shane really does cover it very well in the Irish Independent today. Shane Phelan, 0896 111 mm. to get in contact. Now, this feels like something from the... Completely different sort of a story. Mm. Something from the 90s. It was like when everyone <laughs> was getting fake satellite dishes and what's going yeah. on. Dodgy boxes. <laughs> Yeah, dodgy boxes. So these I'm sure are... there's many people watching us on a dodgy box this morning. Well, 5.1% of the population, yeah. it looks like. We're the, I think yeah. we're the sixth highest country in, in Europe for the use of, of dodgy boxes. Um, so this is obviously a lot... I, I mean, I would associate this a, a lot with sport and accessing sport because there's, you know, there's an awful lot of sports games mm -hmm. that, um, yeah. that we can't access here or, more likely, are really expensive. I mean, if you put together all of the sports uh, packages, you're, you're looking at paying 60, 70 quid a month. Sure, Amazon this has is, so much now. Like, it, yeah. it's on so many different services. So, you know, compare that to, I think it's 12 euro a month uh, for codes to watch pay-protected TV. Yeah. Uh, you, you buy a dodgy box for maybe a couple of hundred quid or whatever. And, you, and away you go. But there's going to be a big crackdown now targeted at Cork, Dublin, Galway, Leash, Louth, Mayo. Um, so so it's been see... spearheaded by the Premier League. So well, they, they, they are big into, into cracking down on this, obviously, because they have this premium product, as they see yeah. it, watched by people all over the world. Uh, one of the problems we have in this country, this part of the world, is that we don't get a lot of 3pm uh, kickoffs because of, uh, you know, we get a lot of English channels. Yep. So, uh, But 3pm kickoffs are readily available in America and in the Middle East. So these dodgy boxes are a way to get around that. Uh, for fans of particular teams that are playing at 3 o'clock on a Saturday uh, or at 2 o'clock on a Sunday, for example. Um, but, but we saw in Ireland the issue with GA Go this year. But well, that's it, You yeah, know, 12 yeah. euro a match and there was mm. four matches on at the weekend. Yeah. Like, it's a lot of money. It's, yeah. it's you know? serious. Like, I was just chatting to one of the guys here about it. So, you know, if you get Sky Sports, you mm. get... You want to watch the rugby on Premier Sports, you want to watch, like, uh, yeah. Disney with the kids, you have Netflix. Like, it's serious We only money. watch Virgin here on Virgin Media. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Everyone here just has Virgin on yeah. Virgin Media. And you're not That's including the contributors. <laughs> Absolutely. And look at the goodness that you get every yeah. morning. Can't wait um, to watch some of the Rugby World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> the, good, the good matches. The good matches. Um, <laughs> starts next weekend. Oh, look um, at him. He's going... Um, um, so, gonna yeah. Go? Anyway, let us know what you think about that. Uh, if, yeah, I was quite surprised to think that we have the sixth highest use of dodgy box. I'm not surprised at all. I am not actually not surprised I'm at all. I'm not surprised okay. at no. all. No. Um, it's a lot of, we'll find a way around at, something. As you said, look how expensive all the packages it is are when you put them together. Yeah. You know. yeah. Uh, 0896 yeah. uh, Now, could you put a price on peace and quiet, Warren? <laughs> I'm going to on this one. I'm, I love the way 
he's asking me. I'm fine. I don't have one at home. How much would you pay to have an so, airline? Tell us about this. Tell us. An airline. Well, this is um, an airline, uh, a Turkish-based airline, Corendon Airlines, if I pronounce that correctly, who are offering this adult-only flight from uh, Amsterdam to the Caribbean island of Curaçao uh, from November. And um, so these no kid flights, you play a premium for no a, children. Uh, yeah, I, I no think zones, isn't it? Yeah, it's zones. A zone rather, on the flight. Yeah. So there's a, a zone which will feature 102 seats that will be at the front of the Airbus 350 uh, with nine extra leg rooms separated from the rest of the plane by walls and curtains. It's walls a plane, though. Is crying yeah. going to stop at a wall? Depends no. Did they, did they soundproof the walls? Maybe. I don't yeah. Know. Um, but you're paying a premium for this, so it's. it's um, 45, 45 euro, is it? for one flight, rising to 100 for the extra large seats. So. Um, I know one person who would pay that. You. Alan Hughes. Alan Hughes Guaranteed. He's not paid. here. Well, I'll yeah. tell you what, he is a man who doesn't want to have to deal with screaming toddlers yeah. running up and down, poking him. Yeah, going, but I mean, there sausages. are things called earphones, you know, and noise cancelling headphones and stuff. There you go, <laughs> noise cancelling Cheaper headphones. in the long run, I would in say. In the long run, yeah. Um, if you want to give us your stories about your own children or other children on planes, you know that we would love to hear from you. 0896 111 And um, we hope you're enjoying watching us on your dodgy um, <laughs> you <laughs> know, know you're not. For uh, the Irish Independent, thank you so thank much you. for joining thank us you. today. Cheers, Cheers for that. Now, coming up after the break, we're going to take a look at the changes being made to Ireland's electoral map. 14 more TDs. We'll see you back here very shortly. Good morning, you're very welcome back. Now, the creation of four new constituencies and 14 additional seats in the Dáil was recommended yesterday by the Electoral Commission. Here to explain the story and break down just what this means for <coughs> Irish voters, it's political analyst Audrey Flynn and political correspondent Sean Defoe. Thank you both so much morning. for being here this morning. Okay. We really appreciate it. Sean, you've done an amazing breakdown of this over the last few days. So can you explain to us what exactly is going on? Because we've got the largest stall. We will have the largest stall we're ever going to have. Yeah, large stall in history, 174 TDs, like you were saying. So we're getting the, the 30 or 14 uh, extra ones and getting four new Dáil constituencies. And this is all because there's a, a part in the constitution that says there has to be a TD for every 20 to 30,000 people. We were well in breach of that because of the population increases. And indeed, some counties are actually still in breach of that because of the way they did it. Uh, quite a few counties, in fact, they, they took a weird variance where they said you can have up to plus or minus 8%, which is the biggest since certainly before 1980, possibly ever, um, a variance in it. So you have some counties that will have one TD for every 32,000 people and some that will be one for every 29,000. Uh, but the big changes, I suppose, on the map is that Dublin Fingal is the big one. That's been split into two, three seat constituencies as part of four new seats in Dublin. You've then got Wicklow and Wexford, which is, is the big change and causing a lot of headaches in the last 24 hours for some politicians down that part of the world where it was two five seat constituencies. Now there is a four seat sort of North Wicklow, a four seat South Wexford. Wexford and a, a one in between a Wicklow Wexford, which I cannot say. It's very early on a saying. Thursday morning, Sean. Uh, it's, there's a lot of W's. I've been calling it we a Wicklow for the last 24 hours because I just can't like quite get over it. But that's a new three seater, and that's really interesting because there's no sitting TD in that geographical boundary at the moment. They're all in Bray what? and Greystones, Greystones aren't yeah. they? In Wicklow, yeah. like Wicklow's every TD. Five Dublin. All five. Uh, South South, 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 South yeah. Dublin extended. Yeah. yeah. All five. There's five TDs for four seater there now. And in Wexford as well. Five, uh, five into four in Wexford, yeah. unless one of them decides to hop the boundary, but it's probably unlikely. Hey, uh, so, uh, <laughs> Mackers. so a lot of people watching this this morning be like, more TDs. Yeah. Like, and I know what you're saying, one for every 30,000, whatever else, but you know, that's, you know, more money being spent, more on the government. Like, it, it, did we need this, Audrey? Well, I think we need proper representation. Okay. I'm more concerned. Well, are we getting it then? Well, it depends. You see, I, well, we, not to the extent, I mean, if you're, say, from Clare or Waterford, I mean, both of those constituencies, for example, have the equivalent four and a half TDs, but they're winning the four. So they're totally underrepresented. Can okay. you explain that to me? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, TDs, yeah, because it, 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 as, as Sean was saying, there's one TD for every 30,000 yeah. on average, right? But the population of Waterford is about 127,000. Yeah. So you've actually effectively, what they could, I believe, should have done was moved the chunk of Tipperary into Waterford and made them both five-seaters. Tipperary was already a five-seat constituency. Waterford could have become a five-seater. Now, the other thing they seem to have ignored is the population growth. Waterford is growing at twice the rate of Tipperary. 10% is against five, right. effectively. Okay. Yet Tipperary 
wasn't, was, wasn't touched apart from... The Acuity brand have got a bit of Kilkenny into it, bizarrely okay. enough. Okay. People in Kilkenny are thrilled about it, of course. Yes, absolutely. Sure. They're such yeah. good friends. Yeah. 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 You know, such and, I mean, there, there's, and so it's going to leave a situation where sitting... It, it's going to be... Next year's local government elections, which are next June, OK, yeah. will determine who's going to run and where. Because a lot of places now, they don't know who's going to be their candidates mm. because people have moved out of constituencies. I mean, if you're, if, if you're for example, we're talking about Wicklow, I mean, if you're in South Wicklow, um, you're sitting there, oh, I can run next year because no, I don't have five sitting TDs running against me. Do you know? Mm. So there'll be a big dog, dog fight in the local government elections in the South Wicklow part of the, the local election year to see who can get on the ticket. Because they, it's, it's a free-for-all in, free in certain all. areas, right? It's three open seats between yeah. Gorey and Arklow. Someone like Malcolm Byrne, for example, you couldn't have made a constituency for him. The Fianna Fáil senator, he's the Malcolm, shortest. who was here the other day <laughs> talking to us. Yeah, yeah. He, he's based in Gorey and was then going around every, uh, telling everyone yesterday that his mother's from Arklow because suddenly <laughs> the politics had started straight away, you know. The leaflets were changing, uh, were, were, were going in last night with people who had moved into different areas, suddenly dropping new housing estates. Like, people, the politicians were on this straight away and also suddenly everyone was looking for candidates in places like Arklow where they didn't have any before. What, what okay. do you think they should have done, Audrin, though? Well, what is this right or should they have done something else? No, in, in terms of actually having a boundary commission the way it is, yeah, the boundary commission is grand. I have no issue with a boundary commission. What I have a problem with is the way they've done it. I mean, I think that they should have had oddly more seats. I know that sounds against a lot of people who want, but I think about 180. Because then, because so, well, that would have been more representative. Four, you think we should go to 180? Yes, we should. We could, and we could have done because the terms of reference gave them that option. Okay. okay. They ignored that. Okay. So 180, that would have meant that we wouldn't have had the the, the position where the variance is over up to eight percent, and which is the most variance is 15, 15 constituencies of a variance over over five percent. Okay. Now, you know, so we could have got rid of that. We could have done it without having that. We could have had a couple of more three three seats, but we could have had more five seaters, which would have been fair because a five seat is easier to get elected, in particular for smaller parties and individuals, than three seats. I mean, someone, for example, one of the one of the interesting things is going to be. Uh, um, is Regina Doherty, mm. right? Regina lost her seat. She was a cabinet minister. She lost her seat in Meath East yeah. at the last election, which was a three-seat constituency. She made a decision last year to actually move to Fingal, and her all her in campaign, Dublin. yeah, Fingal, and, yeah, Fingal, in, in yeah, in yeah. Was Fingal, Dublin, which yeah. was a five-seater. So she made a decision. She was going to switch constituencies, and her slogan for last year has been "Fighting for Fingal." But yesterday's boundary change gave me the ace of four seater and Fingal two three seaters. She was going to move from potentially what if she had held her ground, she would have had four seats to fight in. Now she's going to end the one. She's going to have three seats three to fight seats. in with no history there. Oh, <laughs> she's got no, yeah. Or else she's going to go back and do a U-turn. So but, you, but politics never do U-turns, of course. So who's going to win? <laughs> who's the big winners and losers in this? Like, yeah. Say small parties, independents. Like where are they? Yeah, so as, as I was saying, when you go to more three-seaters, that benefits the larger parties because okay. you need about 25% to get elected in a three-seater, you need about 16.6% to get elected in a five-seater. So when you have bigger constituencies, it favours smaller parties, it favours newer candidates, okay. you know, big ones favour the existing parties and the existing candidates. And I think part of why we didn't see more three-seaters, even though the Electoral Commission wasn't meant to be political, is if they suddenly did that everywhere, we've, I think, four or five new three-seaters, if that became six or seven, there could be a real claim of bias towards the bigger parties. Are you not talking there? about cars here? No, though, how are you doing? Three seaters <laughs> and five seaters. No, 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 yeah. no, no It's not no. a hatchback it's not a scene in, like, Donegal. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Or an S S S SUV that you, the yeah. Juha, you drive around. Them. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Can I ask... Right, so we're sitting here and an awful lot of people, as you said earlier on, you were just like, more money, more TV, you know, whatever. The fact is, our population is exploding. We do need representation. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So we have to look at this. Are they going to eventually have to come back because our population increase over the next 10 years is forecast to be quite large? About two TD, two extra TDs every year is what they reckon. So by the time yeah. we do this again, yeah. there will need to be at least another 10, if not more than that. So what's the other solution is having a referendum. And you would need to have a referendum yeah. to change it and to cap the number of TDs. We do you love could, a referendum could, uh, now. Do love but it's referendum. in the Constitution. That's the problem. Yeah. yeah. You know, so you, you, like the only way you can change it is to have a referendum. So you yeah. do it one or two ways. You either change the limit and say, right, we actually only need one for every 50,000 TDs, or you just put a cap and you just say, right, Dáil is 160 or 170 or whatever. I think that's probably the better way. I think 160 yeah. to 170 is probably right for a, a country of Ireland's size. But otherwise, you have this ever-expanding Dáil. And once they get part of, past about 185, they actually don't even have the seats in Leinster House and the Dáil Chamber. That's so what I'm saying. Like, we don't have... It's not big enough. Yeah. Yeah. I just ask yeah. quick, quickly, 
like what do, how do we compare to other countries? Say for instance the UK, whatever. But a hundred one to a hundred thousand in the UK, one to three. A hundred thousand. Oh, yeah. Now they're very different constituencies, it's a very different electoral system. And they don't have like, proportional representation. No, 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 they're no first they don't. Past first past post. Past the post. Yeah. They're they're like some of their constituencies are massive and some are tiny. Um but yeah, but we, still have we, we are overrepresented by comparison. Don't we? Yeah. Is there anything new for Monaghan? Uh, no, Monaghan, oh. is, Monaghan loses a bit of mead into Mead East, actually, to uh, keep it as a fight. None of us got expertise. Monaghan lost Limerick, a bit of mead. Limerick didn't. A bit of mead. There's mead. all these sort of strange ones. <laughs> so there's a bit of mead in with Monaghan. There yes. was a bit of uh, Roscommon and Donegal in yes. with Sligo Leitrim. Sean, uh, there's now stop. a bit of... Can, Kenny, go stop. on. I'm going to wreck your head. If people want to find out more... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and poor old water forgot nothing either. Uh, <laughs> did you understand? Did, did, are we are we on the same page? <laughs> can Tommy become a TD? Yes, he can. That's all uh, I would say. He can, Alden, yeah. Lynn, <laughs> what party? Though? That's what thank you. Yeah, yeah, let's what not get into that. Party? That would it's be interesting. Sean Poe, you're going to hang around with us as well and I go am. through some more weird and wacky stories stories from not just Ireland, from around the yes. world. Coming up, we are rounding up the weirdest and wackiest stories. That's what we're calling it from around the world with the wonderful Sean And of course, Sean if Defoe. you get this and you're interested in this, wait nine six. Triple one, triple one. Are you? Do you feel you've missed out? Um, oh see you after the break. Welcome back. Now we're taking a look at some of the week's. We're going to call them quirky stories. Yeah, quirky stories yeah. from around the world, from live worms and human brains. I can't. I honestly, this one makes me want to vomit. Yeah. Lawsuits filed against burger giants and stone cold robbery of pebbles in <laughs> oh, Sardinia. Yeah, okay. there's lots to talk about. And the host of Let Me Explain podcast, Sean Defoe, is here. Has stayed with us to talk us through. Good morning to you, Sean. Thanks Hello. for staying with us. I saw this on television the other day. Tell Lunch us about this Australian woman. Now, yeah, we have to warn yeah, you. Trigger warning. We have yes. pictures of. Yeah. This this Ooh. is a worm found during a, an operation in a woman's brain in Australia. My goal is to make you sick on the second. I'm actually like <laughs> I'm gonna put that out. like there is I'm gonna go running. it's gonna be a more I'm gonna go through that door in yeah. a second. So this Tell woman us. in Australia, she thought like she was kind of thinking, Jesus, I'm not not entirely right, and had yeah. a few, few few symptoms and uh, you know a couple of uh, different things, could have a number of things. She went in and I love the description of the doctor because they went in. They said something with your brain. We're gonna have a look at your brain. And the doctor's description when he found this worm was literally that he went to his mate and said, look at this, <laughs> look at what we found in your Gosh, brain. Gosh, what and is that? It's moving. it's moving. There it is it's there. It's eight now, centimetre long. Now, we it's haven't really showed really the re the live version of it. This is... But oh, you can see it online if it's, you want yeah. to. Now, it's, it's it, yeah, still wriggling within her brain. You can see sort of the yeah. area there with the mark. Uh, and they also think that there may have been larvae, yes. like other ones that are growing not only in the brain, yeah. but in other oh, there parts it is. of her body. There it is in the tip. Like, okay, so and hold the, on. How, how they think she got this, right? She used to forage grass and she would eat it. She'd put it in her cooking. And they, oh, they think they it had, was just in the grass or they, a lava or was, something. Yeah, it was in the poo of oh, snakes, yes. of cobras that lived in this particular grassland. <laughs> so, yeah, so she was not, pro I don't know what she properly watched it. The first thing I thought was, well, I'm never picking herbs in the garden again. Yeah. Uh, oh, wash, never, wash everything thoroughly. Never risking getting some sort of a, a worm in my brain. <laughs> oh, my so she wasn't cleaning the poo off her grass oh, my when God. she was eating it. And then she had this in, in her brain and could be in other parts. And apparently and there's, this has happened other places. Yeah, too. but and it, it could have been there for up to two months. Up to two months. It could be living, wriggling around. Wriggling well, around. Eight centimetres meters long like you know it, it's Sean, not it's, it's incredible small. they took and it out with the tweezers like plucking yeah, it it's out very, actually very incredible brain. could you imagine like can you imagine waking up out of that and going oh yeah but what was yeah. it what did you find well we found it's one way well, to change your diet yeah, I tell yeah. you. And another way to change your diet well let's she's move fine. on to what she's, fine. she's, she's actually fine, fine. No, she's fine. Yeah, she's actually they put her on they had to put her on lots of stuff because they need to clear out everything else in her body yeah. they think it may have like been invading basically uh, and it's one of these examples of Almost a COVID-like transfer of a disease from an animal to people. Oh, God. Like, yes. So, like, apparently 75% of the new diseases in humans over the last 20 years have come from animals, animals. like oh, COVID. Yeah. Now, this one isn't spreadable. She's not going to be coughing larvae onto people. Um, but, yes. <laughs> now, if that hasn't Marvel turned movie, you off, isn't it? If that <laughs> turned you off your breakfast, we're going to talk about Whoppers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because we're talking about Burger King and facing a claim 
that what they display on their ads is not actually what you get oh. as the burger. This is going to court. This mm. is going to a court case yeah. in the US. Someone has taken this challenge. That, you know, you've seen it. You pass oh, a burger they, thing it in the drive-thru. It looks beautiful. It looks amazing. Big, massive, juicy tomatoes. Yeah. Big hunk of beef. There, there it is. Look at that. that. Wouldn't you want that for your breakfast? Like, it looks oh gorgeous. My God. And basically what the, the claim is saying is that what you get is this little piddly burger that isn't anything like that. Has like 40% like less meat. That looks about a foot tall. <laughs> There we go. There's the sort of That's comparison. what you really get. That's your, sad, your little limp it? lettuce, a little bit of four-day-old mayo on it, you know. And what they're claiming is basically it's false advertising and they shouldn't be allowed to, to, to do it and put it out there. I'm a bit sceptical. I kind of think it's a bit like, you know, showing up to a Tinder date and saying, ah, oh, jeez, you don't look like your profile picture. hundred you know? percent. Like, um, you know what you're getting. You know, advertising is advertising. It makes everything look better. But, um, yeah, it's going... But, but to you know, be fair, like, places like L'Oreal have had to change their mascara ads mm. because they were putting in digital images that um, weren't what happened. Like, eyelashes yeah. out to here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. Now, burgers so... say they use the same burgers, but you know, like, it's this burger that's been on a pedestal and someone's there with a little spray bottle yeah. onto the, the lettuce to make it look nice and crispy. But and they have, yeah. they've said that they're not required to deliver burgers that look exactly the same <laughs> as the picture. <laughs> you'll get what you get and you'll like it. And you'll eat your dinner or you won't get a McFlurry. You know We're what? not required to look like we advertise either, <laughs> no, to be no. fair. We if look a lot better on in Instagram. The morning and you've had a few drinks... They all taste the same. <laughs> <laughs> they taste the same. We're staying with fast food restaurants yeah. for our next story. We're going across the road to McDonald's. How often have you been in McDonald's and you ask for a McFlurry and they're like, sorry, the ice cream machine is broken? Yes. It always happens. In fact, probably more often than I not. I can honestly say I've never had that experience. I've never had a McFlurry. You've never, never had, had a McFlurry. It's an ice cream. Yeah. Do you know never what I mean? It's the Some same. of them are nice. There's a novelty. There's always a special one that you're like, oh, I like that. And then it tastes the do same. Do you actually go in others. often to get a McFlurry? I not that we're not. advertising this now, but. Well, I do, but the machine's always broken. The machine's always broken. So, <laughs> I haven't had a McFlurry in about 20 years. Supermax, how are, are you? We love you too. So, but, what's uh, going on here? But anyway, this is because, right, so the, the machines that they provide apparently can only be repaired by one company. Yeah. The company that makes them is yes. the only one that has the contract. And now there's this other company that does YouTube videos taking apart all this different kind of machinery and showing how to repair it. Yeah. For people at home, if your toaster breaks, here's a take apart a toaster and put it back together. And they are saying, they're starting a campaign saying, we want to fix the McDonald's if we had this contract. They'd all be fixed. You'd never want for a McFlurry again. Yeah. And they've even pointed to a website called McBroken, which tracks all the McDonald's in the US and the that, UK. And with their, that the machines are broken. The there machines are is. out of order. Well, there you go. You can see. There's and look a at the website red. that tracks all the of machines the that are broken. <laughs> the machine, in the McFlurry Mc... machines. Like people really care about mad stuff, don't they? Do. They do. But look at all that red. But look at, at where you can't time, get a McFlurry so compared the to the green. The company who do this and fix them are obviously not up to scratch. Look how if good the... Ireland is. Or is it just? There's just none in Ireland. That's the problem. There's none there. <laughs> no McFlurries at any point. <laughs> Nothing. Um, but yeah, the company is obviously yeah, you're not keeping up to date with it or else they, they're, there is a particular issue. What this this other company that wants to fix them said that the units that they use in these machines are particularly prone to overheating. And so that's why right. so okay. if you do, I don't know, 10 If you're an hour bored this morning and you want something to do, McBroken, you can find out where all the ice cream machines at McDonald's are. are there you go. They're not working. Um, a French man, what a French this man has been caught with something mad. Stealing stones from not only a few stones now. Forty six kilos yeah. of stone. But I was trying In to work out like car. is that like 10 big stones or is that like a big load of pebbles? But hold on, where, where was he? What's so he on? was in Sardinia and apparently yeah. it's crime in Sardinia to steal sand and to steal stones off the beaches. They've had so many people doing it. And over the years, yeah. they use x-rays in the ports and airports to scan your luggage to see if there's bottles of sand in there. And they've caught loads of people. Their maximum fine is €3,000 because... One, it's so pristine. It's this white sand and it's all this. It's beautiful. A lot beautiful. of Sardinia yeah. is a nature reserve. Yeah. Uh, and so you, you can't do it. And I was thinking of this, I was like, Jesus, who'd do it? And then I realised, I went to Sardinia in about 2012 and there's a big old conch, one of those big shells that you right took house. home. Did you bring home? We took home. Did so, you bring home? Uh, we didn't get fined, thankfully. And if the Sardinian police are watching, uh, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, I meant Corsica. I obviously meant Corsica. Yeah, the sand is so prized that authorities passed a law in 2017 to prevent tourists from taking them home. Do you they have passed a, a Sardinian mm. stone? We do ask you weird things on this show. 0896 triple one triple one. The host of Let Me Explain, the podcast uh, that has you were doing the Electoral Commission and everything like did that. The Electoral today. Commission Day, but also following up on that story we did last week on the Loch Ness Monster Hunt. But they yes. were oh. over the weekend. Did they find anything? Uh, they found something, but they have no definitive proof. What, so, <sighs> no, they didn't find a huge they amount. Didn't. But we do go into a lot of detail on uh, the St. Columba story. Remember we oh, said yeah. St. Columba? The drunk Irish the man one. who found the Loch Ness Monster. The story is way better Sean than Defoe, ever. thank you so Thank much for that. So Let much. me explain. We'll be back with you on Ireland AM in just a minute.
Hello, welcome back to Ireland AM. There is lots more to come on today's show, Tommy. Sure is. Coming up very shortly, Belfast actor Roisin Gallagher talks about starring in Sky Atlantic's new rom-com that was set in Ireland and, of course, working with industry greats. Love a rom-com. We're also talking clown corpses and coming-of-age comedy in our movies and TV review. Look forward to that. And from social media to stand-up, comedian uh, Shane Daniel Byrne is with us, hot off his sell-out performances at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. He is so funny. So funny. Alan is in the kitchen getting ready to learn some Italian as always, yes, Alan. Yes, Alberto, our Italian stallion, is here with us this morning. Oh, <laughs> wow, upgrade. Alberto, give us some Italian this morning. So this morning we're going to cook pasta. Okay, and it? then we have to do like this. <laughs> no, give me an Italian word. <laughs> Buongiorno, that's it, you know. <laughs> We're going to cook a pasta. I can even say that. Sorry, pasta. Pasta. You school, you learn pasta. so much here in Ireland, AM. <laughs> so lovely pasta this morning with a, a, an Italian sausage. Italian sausage, of course. We're going to have some fennel, some onion, and there's going to be some spring onion zambasi. So it's a little bit different. It's not one of the classic ones that have a name like Tupanesca and Arrabbiata. Just a list just of what was And this is yeah. part of a pop-up that you're going to be doing in the Intercontinental exactly. Hotel from next week? We're going to do a pop-up, an Italian pop-up called Rossi's, of course. Oh, <laughs> look, it's going to be named after him. Oh, and it's going to be Thursday, Friday, Saturday for four weeks in September. Well, we'll talk so, about that a little later on. Looking very good. forward to it. Now, the kids have been going back to school all this week, so we want to see your kids' pictures. Send them in to us on WhatsApp us on 0896 Don't forget, we need permission from the legal guardian and Derek has gone back to school himself this morning. Derek, how are you getting on? Uh, buongiorno, Alan. <laughs> this uh, morning we are heading back to school. <laughs> <laughs> Loretto Junior School is where we're at this morning. Emma Halstead, our moon tour. Emma, are you excited? Yeah, we're very excited now this morning. A little bit nervous too, but uh, yeah, can't wait to welcome all the, our new students, especially our uh, incoming junior infants. Um, yeah, we can't wait to Looking start forward to how, how was your summer, by the way? Yeah, it was lovely, yeah. We had a, lo had a lovely summer, went away, spent some time in the sun, chilled with yeah, my friends. Which is great. And now yeah. back to work, head down. Yeah. Uh, I believe Mum was a big fan of the show as well. <laughs> Can we say hello to Mum? Who is Mum? <laughs> She'll die. Bernie. <laughs> Bernie, good morning to you, Bernie. And I love the fact that Emma here has a diffuser behind her. <laughs> Keep things nice and calm, nice and settled here this yeah. morning. Lots of fun coming your way at 8.45, guys, but for now, back to studio. Thank I love you this diffuser. very much, Hi, Derek. I'm glad he uh, cleared that up. I thought he was smoking. How's the back of him, Derek? So it's a diffuser. <laughs> Um, great stuff. Who needs a blackboard anymore? How impressed was that big screen? So fancy. Amazing. Uh, we're going to catch up with Derek later on. And yes, send through pictures of your kids back to school. We love to see them. We're going to show a few of them very shortly. You need to be chill to handle Irish weather. That's why Chill sponsor weather updates on Virgin Media. Thank you, Jaron. A very good morning. We're live here from Loretto Junior School. We're on Crumlin and Dublin South Side here this morning and coming up later on this hour. We are heading back to school. We're going to be catching up with the principal and some of the parents and little smallies on their first day back to school here this morning. So that's all to come. Plus lots of your back to school photos coming your way in just a few moments' time. Hang with us for that. Now, we're getting past eight o'clock here together. And in fact, if you are heading back to school, it's a very wet start out there this morning. Stay nice and dry because we're looking at plenty of heavy rain crisscrossing the island now right through parts of Roscommon and across Leash, Offaly, Kildare, parts of Wicklow, Wexford into North Tip not escaping either. So keep the rain gear at the ready if you're heading out the gap, uh, heading off to school in the next wee while in those uh, light to locally moderate westerly winds. Now right across the day in fact still a showery day in store where that rain does hit again leaning on the slightly heavy side for a time but easing back as we approach late afternoon into early evening. In fact we're going to see brighter spells push through as the day goes on. Quite muggy, quite heavy and humid in terms of those valleys too with top temps in and around 16 to 20, even 21 degrees would you believe out there today. Now right across into tonight it looks like showers for a time once again leaning heavy through parts of the west. Elsewhere it will clear out, drier and clearer with some patchy mist, a little taste of fog as well feeding its way into your Friday morning with temperatures no lower than 8 to 13 degrees. So that's how we're shaping up for now. Keep your back to school picks coming our way and we'll be back again live at 8.35. You need to be chill to handle Irish weather. That's why Chill sponsor weather updates on Virgin Media. 
It's time now to take a look at this morning's papers. We'll start with the Irish Times. It's headline, Smaller parties face pressure as Dáil grows by 14 TDs. The Electoral Commission proposes an increase of constituencies by four to 43 due to population increase. This will mean the Dáil will have 174 TDs after the next general election. Dysfunctional and unsafe. New report lays bare crisis in mental health care. That's the front page of the Irish Independent. A series of reports shows the extent of the crisis nationwide. Dr Susan Finnerty's nationwide examination made 49 recommendations for change. The examiner leads with urgent appeal, 125 road deaths and 600 serious crashes in 2023. The chairwoman of the RSA, Liz O'Donnell, is seeking increased penalty points for dangerous driving as it emerged that 125 people have died on the roads this year. That's an increase of 25 on the same period in 2022. The Toddlers Among Tragic Crash Victims is the top story on the Daily Mail. Two toddlers, Rosaline McDonough and Tom O'Reilly, both aged three, have died in separate car accidents in the space of 24 hours in what is becoming a year of carnage on Irish roads. The Mirror also covers this story with Stop the Carnage. And finally, the sun leads with its cruel world we are living in. A family has been left in mourning after a devastating crash killed a three-year-old boy and his grandparents in Cashel County Tipperary at 9pm on Tuesday night. The star leads with no country for bold men. Australia, Canada and New Zealand apparently won't let Jonathan Dowdall, who gave evidence against the monk, into the countries over his links to crime and also the IRA. And the Herald goes with teens attack couple with a machete. A delivery driver has been left with a broken elbow and cuts to his arms and back after his wife, him and his wife, were attacked on a Sunday stroll in Clonee, West Dublin. And that was because they were trying yeah, to stop them attacking a dog. A, dog. <sighs> a machete. What? Um, mad, absolutely know, yeah. mad. Now, we're going to change the tone right now because there are an awful lot of children who are going back to school Today. And we were asking you to send in pictures of your little ones going back to school and keep them coming in 0896111111. First up, we have Lily Bella, and she's in Dunleary. Oh, look at her. All ready for her first day back at school. So cute. God, it would make you broody, wouldn't it? No. Uh, next <laughs> up, we have... You didn't see the tantrum together to sound like that, I'd imagine. But next up, we've cute. got brother Sean and Thomas there in Port Leash today. Sean is all set for his first day in sixth class. His older brother Thomas is heading into... Second year, and I think we uh, there, there we, we are. You they, got look at there, the image of each other, and you uh, got someone who's going into second year into a photo. Fair, yeah, play, fair to you. play to you. Two cool dudes. Next yeah. up, we have uh, Mia from Athlone, all kitted out for school. Ah, oh, look uh, at that. There's Mia. School bag on as well. Mia's mum says Mia loves the show, especially not us, Derek, <laughs> the weatherman. <laughs> uh, she loves Derek and loves the series every morning. I love it. And speaking of our fabulous Derek, we've got a little picture. This uh, is Derek's nephew, Sean. Sean is in Nace, and this is his first day of school. Look at the little cutie. And I suppose it is like for the... I remember my first day at school, I cried my eyes out. Had, what, had what, an primary absolute, school? Yeah. You had, remember that? <laughs> I knew you were going to say what that. Do, what I, did you say I was up? setting myself Why up. Why did you for set that. yourself up? I remember. Do you know what? And I had black and white tellies and like, <laughs> did you have shoes on your feet? Then. Yeah, we had pieces of uh, brown paper yeah. wrapped around it with the thing, you know. Back in my day. But I cried and I threw a tantrum and I hated it. And I used to dream that the nun had an Alsatian. <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> used to dream? I my dream that the, the nun would have an Alsatian at the gate. That's why you were crying. That's why I was crying. Oh, right, wasn't the teacher. Oh, no, I would cry. I was terrified going into school. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and did they have cameras back then? <laughs> <laughs> do you have a picture? <laughs> uh, send us through your pictures. Uh, we've Why had... do you do it to yourself? Why well, do you do my it? kids were having tantrums and uh, crying like, going Go into school, school as well. Yeah. Um, do you have any I don't problem? know about the nun and the <laughs> station, though. <laughs> With a nun. Thank you. 0896 triple one triple one. If you happen to have a picture of Alan Hughes in your house getting ready for school, we'd love to see it. Um, lovely pictures of me in school. <laughs>
Thank They're you. not in black and white. Thank you for sending in your pictures. <laughs> 0896 oh, triple one, triple one. Please send in a few more and we'd love to show them as the show goes on. Now, after the break, actor Roisin Gallagher <laughs> is going to join us for a chat. Yes, Roisin was in the dry, brilliant show. She's got a new show coming up on Sky Atlantic. We'll be back here in just a few minutes. Now, you're very welcome back. Never in her wildest dreams did Roisin Gallagher think her home city would provide the backdrop to her newest TV project and getting to portray Belfast in a positive light has been a full circle moment. We think. We put words into well, her mouth. We'll, we'll see what happens. The one, we expect she's going to say that. The yeah. only one in her family to enter like. the world of acting. Roisin Gallagher has been honing her craft for many years and she joins us now. Roisin, it is absolutely lovely to have you Morning. here. Thank because you so much for having me. You were doing really exciting stuff. You were in The Dry, which was a, a big show last year. Your dad was Kieran Hines, all this kind of stuff. In it, you know, you're a woman who goes on The Dry. Mm -hmm. What? Like, it was a huge role. It was massive. How did you do it? How did you <laughs> go sober? Uh, how did you go sober for that length of time? It was, uh, oh, it was a complete gift. It was total joy. Shiv as a character is incredible. She's all the things you want as an actress to play. Um, Nancy Harris, Harris's writing is, is just fantastic. So yeah, um, like, I'm still, I'm still pinching myself for Shiv, but also now I've got Janet into the mix as well of, like, dream role. Yeah. And, and having Kieran Hines, who you just mentioned there, play your dad in it as well, yes. is just like, you know, he's kind of <sighs> royalty, fancy, you know? But... Very fancy about it. Isn't he very fancy about it? I mean, listen, <laughs> like I would challenge anybody not to fall in love with him instantly. As That's soon what as I thought. I, everybody, everybody. Oh, I mean, I can see it there. Yeah, really. With his, <laughs> handsome uh, man. Yeah, handsome man, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, like, nice, bro. It, it must be a great, like, Com camaraderie though it looks like on the show like there's a great vibe up everybody in it yeah we really got on so well we gelled quite quickly naturally there's no sort of like conflicting personality shall we say everybody got on really well had the same kind of outlook and mm. and just wanted the show to be really yeah. great and um and it was like working with family did you go yeah. on the drive for it the first time i did did you? Because the series two is coming out. Yeah. So the first series you went on the drive. Well, there was a few reasons. And one of them was that I just thought, I've never played a lead like this before. Yeah. And I wasn't sure um, in terms of focus and concentration and line learning and all the sort of bits of the job that I, I really wanted to give it my best shot. And I just thought, let's give yourself a, give yourself a, a, a chance to have a clear head and, you Are know. You're doing it again. Um, going sober or doing the dry? For, yeah, for season two. <laughs> for season two, where you're going sober again. I, I, it, was a, it was a little bit more gentle on season two because I'd done it before, so I'm, yeah. I know what it's like. Yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you've done something once. Quite, no bother. It's okay uh, to do it again with a, with a glass of Prosecco. <laughs> <laughs> Always helps. Um, you spoke about family there. Oh, Your yeah. dad, unfortunately, passed away, but you did recordings with him and then wrote a play around this. It was called uh, Natural disaster yeah it must have been a really special thing to do it was so special it, it felt like a little bit of a turning point for me um, it was um, really born from a fear of forgetting his voice he was from County Tyrone he had an incredible way of telling stories we grew up at the dinner table listening to stories of farming life and you know um, I, I when when there's also something when you're aware that somebody's going to die, it's terminal, there's no kind of getting better from mm. that. And I found that experience really profound and I didn't know what to do with it. And then mm. I just got this sense of, of use your work, do, do collect the stories, this is what you do, this is your job. Amazing, and um, yeah. dad was gracious and he said, yeah, go on ahead. Um, so I recorded a lot of conversations that we had right up until a few days before he passed and um, you know my family were right behind me and and uh, and and I had some incredible support from Tinderbox Theatre Company the Mac Theatre in Belfast like these amazing um, people helped me help me make this this play and it was wonderful it's gorgeous it's really special yeah. like it was you know special. if anyone's 
has a parent coming towards the end and they're watching this right now, like get out your phone and record. Yeah. Like it's really amazing to have that because you have yeah. it forever and, and the memory kind of goes on. It's a beautiful thing Do that you Do you know what's did. funny is that I've never listened back and I've never watched it back. Really? But I know it's there. Yeah. And there's something about um, people's words becoming their um, legacy, I guess. Yeah. And so it's there and, it, and, that, and that gives me some peace and, and comfort. It's lovely. It's absolutely yeah. beautiful. And exactly when you do choose to listen to it, it'll bring back all those yeah. memories, yeah. which is it's just time. wonderful. Yeah. Um, let's talk about your latest project. Yeah. Set in Belfast, The Lovers on Sky Atlantic. That's pretty, pretty good. Get, yeah. Actually, getting the film at home as well, that's even better again. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Sorry. <laughs> there was a Tommy right. going, lads, can we move? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let's move the whole lot. Just a whole lot. I just want to walk down the road. Just a wee bit grand. closer. It's so much fun. Everybody hands wants a wee bit closer. Uh, what's it about, the, the Lovers? The Lovers, so I would call it a romantic comedy drama that's quite dark. <laughs> And that's going to cover like a whole host of um, themes and, and issues that are brought up within the series. It's a six-parter. Uh, it's myself and Johnny Flynn. Johnny it's written. Flynn. I well know. Done. I know. I know. <laughs> Um, it's uh, written by the incredible award-winning David Ireland, produced by Drama Republic, and um, it's really a story about these two very unlikely people, an odd couple coming together, um, crashing into each other's lives in an unlikely circumstance, and how they navigate um, their feelings towards each other and obstacles in the way, and it's a great love story. Yeah. So your face is so expressive. It's fantastic. That's not Johnny Flynn there. Johnny Flynn was one of the leads in Love Sick, if anyone's seen that, the Channel 4 show. Yeah. Now, what I think is amazing, because we're all of an age that, you know, we remember the troubles, we remember the peace process, all mm. that kind of stuff. This is a romantic comedy, dramedy. Mm. Like paramilitaries are, <laughs> paramilitaries are involved in this in a comedic, way like she was a former part of is the LVF or is she which one is she oh are we allowed to say I think one of are. the three letters of the alphabet one, one of, of the three letters, letters of the alphabet, alphabet yeah, right yeah yeah, yeah it's yeah, like yeah. did you ever think that you'd be able to treat that subject matter in such a way in a romantic comedy uh no. it's amazing no I didn't but David did obviously yeah and he's the man for the job and does it in such a way that it is respectful um you know you can't tell a story about a place without honour in its history and he does that in such a way that um, we feel we fall in love with the place. I hope I did. Mm. I really fell in love with Belfast. I love all parts of Belfast and it was just, um, yeah, it was it was really well done. I, I, I think we actually yeah. have a clip of uh, the lovers as well. If we have time, maybe let's take a quick look at it. Okay. No, I don't know. Maybe we don't have that clip there. Sorry. <laughs> Watch um, it next week when it comes out. But it's it is, it, it's, it's the tension between Catholics and Protestants so that everybody is aware of. Mm. Um, but the fact that you're able to do that and make a love story out of it, but mm. this happens and this is a sign of the times as well that, you know, people from both sides of the community are, are actually, you know, they're, they're, there's relationships happening and yeah. times are changing, you know, and it's a good way to highlight this in television. Yeah, I think so. There was a lovely um, comment that was made about the story being, it shows us and it explores more about how we're united than divided. And I think that's a really hopeful message and um, it shows it shows Belfast and the people of Belfast in the light that we want to see more of, because that's the reality, you know. It's, Absolutely. Yeah. It's so lovely. Like, it's great. It's coming, it's going to, The Lovers is going to be on Sky Atlantic and now on September the 7th. And honestly, me and my ilk, were crying out for something like this. We're just like, can we have a bit of romantic comedy drama? We can't re-watch Grey's Anatomy for the 75th. Uh, Roisin Galler, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank Looking you. forward to the dry as well. Thank the you next so season. much. Thank you very much. Great to have you with us, Roisin. Plenty more coming up after the break. Uh, Alberto Rossi is busy cooking up a nice pasta dish. See you shortly. Now we have a mouth-watering Italian dish in the kitchen this morning. His name is Alberto Rossi. <laughs> <laughs> Alberto, I'm sorry. But it's OK. Every morning. I mean, every morning. We all fought know. for it, you know? I was like, <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, yes, so there's a bit of fennel, a bit of sausage, a bit there of is. pistachio. What have you got for us? So, uh, I didn't embarrass you. No, I just, I'm just <laughs> pulling a red face <laughs> here. I want 8.32 in the morning. Very good. <laughs> So we have, yes, we have sausage, 
Italian sausage, of course, a little bit spicy, not that much, you know, from Calabria, so there's chili in it. Then we have fennel that we sliced fine, you know, just down on the side, you take it down on the side, so you have long strips, oh, okay. you get me? It, it's, it's very important to have, you can even cut it so differently, what, you know? Is that fennel over there? Do you have... The fennel like, will be looking like this. I would yes. never buy fennel. Would you? No, like, we have no. fennel seeds, I know. Yeah, yeah, fennel covered. seeds and everything, but, you know, it's the aniseed flavour, you know, and okay, fennel what is... What does it taste like? Aniseed. Oh, aniseed. Like, or, or if you were to think licorice, you know, licorice. Okay. licorice. Licorice. You know, I have a piece. Really? Like I, I always <laughs> find it very. <laughs> it's very, it's very. It oh, washes your mouth. It's really, doesn't it? Yeah, try it. So basically, you have the spicy sausage, then you have the fennel. Oh. And it kind of keeps the the spice That's down like a bit. It's you know? sweet or something. Yeah. That's it's in the sweet licorice, aniseed. Yeah. 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 It's lovely, you know. It, that's like We're very uncultured, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of those Albert vegetables that is not really used, uh, you don't really find it around, you no, know? No, no, no. Uh, okay. We obviously bake it, we, we eat it raw in salads and everything in Italy, so it's uh, key in this. So I have the Italian sausage that I diced and I put it in the pan and it starts so to release... fennel and sausage in there. Fennel, now. sausage and red onion that I sliced a little bit. Right, red onion. Okay. What you want is you want first to put the sausage in and it starts to release some of the extra fat that it has. Oh, and then right. you put in the fennel, the onion, and a crushed garlic. So it starts to wilt and caramelize, so you have a different flavor in it, you know? Okay. This is lovely. And this is all part of an Italian pop-up that's going to be in seasons in the Intercontinental. Absolutely, yes. And we're going to start on Thursday. Rossi's, yes. Rossi's. No, no ego there, you know? No <laughs> ego at all, no. So every weekend? Every weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, from next week, the 7th, yeah. we're going to have so it. pure traditional Italian food. Absolutely. Like, uh, like you go to eat in... Uh, I'm not saying, like, Nonna's house because it's not correct. Nonna's but house. But you have the real food, you know? It, it's, but sometimes you go in places and you have... And then mix Italian, you know? Yeah, but this is the real This is the real Italian. OK. So now you can see that the sausage, the fennel and the onion is cooking well nice. And I put a little bit of white wine. Oh, OK? Yes. And that creates also the sauce, because you have all the water coming out from the fennel and the fat from the sausage. And that creates all the sauce. Then, no pistachios for Alan, so we're going to put in I'll some put parsley in. that I chopped. Oh, you can put them in, that's no problem. Tommy you sure? Them. Yeah, put them yeah? in. So the pistachios create a little bit of a crunch on it, you know? Not many, like okay. a little bit. So, and you haven't chopped them up, they're just... Uh, just all like this. Shows. I just okay. took them out okay. of the shell and yeah. I put them in, Lovely. you know? So Lovely. no crazy work. Then here I have a little bit of basil, a little bit of spring onions and some spinach. So you okay. create some green in it, okay? Okay. So, do you know, like in some Italian restaurants, and the chef will come out and go around the tables? Will you do that in Russia? Absolutely. Oh, I love ah. it. The idea is that also we have a couple of dishes that you can order by the table. So, let's say that Tommy and Alan come, and you see that on the menu, you can uh, order a shared risotto alla parmigiana. I'll come out with the trolley, we'll have the big parmesan wheel. I'll finish it at the table and I'll serve it to you. Oh, so there great. is a little bit of explanation of yeah. where the food comes from. A bit of theater. People like that. That they like that. You know, yeah. people like that, and we want to do no it. No better man. No they better. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> we try, you know. The theater. Yeah. Um, so right. So you just so kind the of pasta going to this now. What yes. kind of pasta are you? Yes. Uh, I use uh, like a little uh, macaroni, but you can use pakari. Once it's a big pasta, you know, like with penne, I wouldn't use penne. Maybe oh. fusilli. Why, because it's not too small? The... Yeah, like, you know, you want the right size, you know, kind of the sauce f f falling inside in the pasta, you know? Okay. So I put the pasta in, and then I kept a little bit of the water that I used to cook the pasta, because it's full of starch, and that even better for the sauce, okay? Yeah. And then, finish it off, a little bit of uh, lemon. The lemon always brings out the flavors. And then we have some uh, pecorino cheese that will melt and create even more sauce. And mm. see, because we obviously, you're tight for time on doing on telly, like, would you be, would, would you take longer to kind of let that... Ah, only, away, only five it... extra minutes, because okay. I didn't have, you know, you can make this sauce in about 12 to 13 minutes. You just okay. need a little bit of time to make sure that the fennel is caramelized okay. and soft, because otherwise it will be hard and crunchy ah, yeah, against yeah. the pasta. It's not, it's not really what you want, you know? Okay. And that's it, you Look see? That's easy as that. And it's a bit different, as I was saying, than, than usual. You know, it's not yeah. one of these classic pastas. Mmm, yum. Okay. And then, you know, if you don't like the pistachios because maybe you're allergic to nuts, to you just leave them yeah. out yeah. and yeah. you don't, don't even put, put them in, in you know? That looks delicious. Look at that. Look at that. That's gorgeous. There we go, you. Tommy. Thank you very much. So good luck with your pop-up, Thank Rossi's. you very much. Thank Rossi's you very much. at Seasons at the Intercontinental. Can't wait.
we'll have to go over and visit you. Absolutely. And I'll come out with the trolley and the cheese. Yeah, <laughs> the Italian sausage. And the fennel, I never knew that's no, what it tastes never like knew fennel. Fennel is, is, is absolutely lovely. Mm. I usually cut it raw like this and I eat it around and it keeps your mouth nice and fresh. Yeah, you, can, you could, you can have that as a snack. Yeah, I have it yeah, in the crazy. car when I drive to work. Really? Instead really? of having a packet of crisps, yes. Give I used to fennel. have a packet of M&Ms I used to eat. And now I, I, I switch to fennel. <laughs> 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 so <I> move up. <laughs> Alberto, thank you so much for that. Uh, no problem. Yeah. Absolutely Enjoy delicious. your breakfast. Mm. Now, coming up, Derek's catching up with an inspirational Claire Rose after she made her mark on the iconic stage last week. We'll see you in a few minutes. Welcome back. Now ahead of the return to school, Derek has been sampling the atmosphere at one of Dublin's schools first day back with yes. the best blackboard I've ever seen. He's live from the Loretto Junior School and he's one very familiar face with him. Uh, Derek, how's the mood this morning? Yes, Are people good morning, excited? guys. Lots of nerves, Tommy. Yes, people are very excited. Welcome down here to Loretto Junior School. Good morning, everyone. Oh, they're very, very <laughs> excited. And one person who's particularly excited is the Principal Mary Gallagher. Good morning to you, Mary. Good morning, Derek. How are you? Back to school after a long absence. Yes, a really long. Well, it doesn't feel like that long, no. to be honest. With you. <laughs> Probably doesn't feel like long enough, but we're back anyway, and we're delighted to be back. Uh, how are you feeling first day back at school? I like a bit nervous. So, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's always, the first day is always different. And it's, it's always, you know, you never know how it's really going to go, you know, you don't know how, how people are going to be feeling, how kids are going to be feeling. Um, and obviously this year as well, we're slightly understaffed, like every school in Dublin is, so that's all a bit nerve-wracking as well. But Normally your quote is about 19, 19 teachers, so where are you yeah, at, Mary? we're at 14 at the moment. Okay, so, yeah. and obviously that means to a little bit of overcrowding, a little bit of extra kids in classrooms. Yeah, exactly, and, and it, what it mainly means is that there's no resource team, that, that, that's the worst part of it, you know, for the children need a bit of extra help. It's just the personnel just aren't there, so... Uh, Loretto Junior School itself is a desk school. Mm -hmm, it is indeed. Um, you're here in Crumlin, and in fact, you've lots of great facilities here oh, in the school. We absolutely do. We're very, very lucky. We really are. Um, and, you know, we, we've worked really hard to build up that. And, you know, and we're uh, unique in the fact that we've got a huge big green space out the back so the children can play in the fields if it's, if it's nice weather and that. You know, we've got loads of positives. We've got so many, um, you know, we've got a fantastic sensory room. We've got two ASD classes. We've got great classrooms. You know, we're, we're and fantastic staff. So we are really, really lucky. It's just, if we had more staff, it would be better. <laughs> yeah, it would be better. And you, I suppose, what is holding back? Uh, what's holding back the staff? Like, I, in terms of retention, what's the issue? I think it's the accommodation crisis in uh, in Dublin for a start and, and rental prices but then I also think that Covid made people want to go and travel so I think people are doing one year in a school they're getting their jury hit which is their probationary year okay. and then they're going traveling and I can't blame them you know um, it, it, having that opportunity it wasn't there when I graduated you know to, to go to Australia or to go to Dubai or you know to travel the world and why wouldn't you take it because you know you've no no responsibilities absolutely and a qualification in your back pocket so I understand it I just hate it. <laughs> we were wandering around the school here this morning and as you mentioned we have the sense Room, but also oh. what I noticed is that you have great books, you have a great library oh, here. Certainly. But this is a notebook school. Yes, Tell us about yeah. that system. So we just we don't use workbooks, we don't use um, you know curriculum books. As it, sorry, as in like, books for subjects. You know mm. everything is very hands on. It's um, it's very play based, very, very um, you know, concrete materials. Um, obviously we do use worksheets. You know we're not completely paperless, but uh, for the most part we find that with workbooks you're kind of stuck to what's in the book. What's in the book? So like if a child has an, an idea, you know you kind of can't go with it. So with it, it really, with no books, it really lends to creativity and imagination and letting the children really kind of guide their own learning, which we love. Yeah, so you still have a curriculum to oh, follow, course. but you just oh, do absolutely. it in a different way. Exactly, 100%. Okay, yeah. really, really cool. Yeah. Um, we're going to pop over here now to Fantastic. a face that we all uh, know following the rows of Tralee, all the way from Fecal in County Clare. Ashley O'Connor, good morning to you, Ashley. Good morning, thanks a million for having Ashley, me. Ashley, first up, let's talk about the rows of Tralee. What a, an amazing performance. And in fact, I really enjoyed your interview on stage with Catherine. Thank you. Yeah, it was absolutely incredible. I mean, the two weeks leading up to the Rose of Tralee, um, the tour itself was just like a mind-blowing experience, once in a lifetime, and then of course culminating in the stage, the live bit that people saw at home, just once in a lifetime. And it's a great moment, and I know the Rose family, a lot of them watching here this morning as well. I mean, they're, they're fantastic, really, the friends you make for life out of it. Yeah, I think 
I suppose it's something that people always say every year when they're on stage and you don't really fully understand the depth of those friendships until you're in the middle of it. Um, we've been through kind of a lot on the two weeks of tour. It's been, you know, a really emotional experience. There's been highs and lows for everybody, but we've all kind of rallied around each other and pulled each other through those weeks um, right up until the, the Tuesday night. Now, you're a teacher. Well, in fact, you were a teacher in the school because you're heading back to Fiecal and County Clare, I believe. Yes, so I've had three incredible years in Loretto. Um, the staff, the community here, the children here are just second to none. And it's been a really tough decision for me. But, you know, they've all, I've always had such a strong draw to home, my family and my community. So I'm heading that way for now, but it's not been an easy goodbye. And they're all going to miss Miss O'Connor, right? <laughs> are you going to miss Miss O'Connor? Yeah. yeah, they're going to miss Miss O'Connor. Are you sad to be leaving? Oh, of course I am. I mean, I've had just three such formative, um, you know, wonderful years here. And the staff have welcomed me with open arms. The children, the, cr the community of Crumlin have welcomed me. So I think it's going to be a really long time until I find a school as wonderful as this back home. And you said you're going to do a lot of work with breast cancer charities too, down, down in the Banner County, Banner Care. Yeah, so I suppose there's one char charity in particular, Slauncha on Clar, um, and, you know, that charity kind of aims to just provide a haven for women, maybe in between their chemotherapy treatments, in between their radiation treatments, and just allow them, like, a space to just interact with each other, talk about their experiences. So I'm really hoping to do a little bit of work with them, for sure. OK, but for now, you're going to take a bit of a breather and go sub and then... <laughs> yeah, I think take a breather, go, go to Greece first and then sub Go to Greece yeah. first and then come back and teach. Now, we're going to say hello to some quick little smallies here, and we've got Skylar. Good morning to you, Skylar. Hello. Hello, and where are you from, Skylar? Ireland. You're from Ireland. <laughs> and tell me, what's your favourite thing about school? Football. You like football? Good man, give me a big high five. Are you excited to be back at school today? Yeah. You are. And over here then, who have we got? Xavier. Xavier and Xavier, tell us your favourite thing about school. Maths and yard. You like maths and being out in the yard. And do you like playing football and soccer? Well, I'm not exactly that good. Good to do, and <laughs> and I don't exactly win that much, and I usually prefer being out in the yard, but not exactly football as much. As much, and tell me, why do you watch Ireland AM? Because I like the weather. Oh, there we have it, our number one fan here in Loretto Junior School. Very, very cute. Anyway, we're having a great morning here. First day back to school. From me and all the parents, a big bula boss, a big, big shout out. Come on, guys. Oh. <laughs> the parents are just as nervous. Back to you in the studio. How cute is that now, Tommy? Look at little saviour. Big wave there, there saviour. Derek, go back to the other little fella who came around to you and say hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, where are they? They're everywhere. Look, oh God, no, he's gone back. <laughs> there, there's so oh many of them God. here. Look, they're peering in the window as well. Ash, oh, they're great. They're I all see look. my granny watching out in the AM, so I'm guessing she'll be watching right now. Oh, your granny. What's your granny's name? Kay. Kelly. Kay. Hello. Kay. Kay. Oh, Kay. 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 Hello, Kay. Hello, to Granny Kay. Kay. Hello, Granny Hello. Kay. Hello. Oh, my God. Isn't he fantastic? Oh, they're great. You can't beat it. First day back to school. So cute. And so oh, good. Fair God. play to you, Derek. Oh. Hello, oh, Xavier. So and lovely. straight up. And what is it you like about Ireland Day? The weatherman. The weatherman. The weatherman. Well prepped. They were all. <laughs> yeah, <right>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, won't you say that when I come to you? <laughs> the other little fella who was trying to get on it. No, and we've been getting lots of back to school pictures this morning and uh, here's Leah from Limerick already for her first day in class. Look at it, there's Leah. Gorgeous, oh, Leah. Fabulous. We've got Love Maisie school returning bag. to school as well, but it looks like her best pal, Bobby, isn't too happy to see her go. Look, oh, at, Bobby. look at Bobby. Gorgeous. And it looks like Carson from Ballyfermot is only <laughs> here. Hey, Carson! Delighted ready to, go. to be heading back to school. Lots <laughs> of enthusiasm in that picture, Fantastic. that's for sure. 0896 111 one. Make sure you've got it. The Guardian's permission. We'll have more pictures for you back in just class. a minute on Ireland AM. Weatherman. Hello, welcome back to Ireland Day, and we've got lots more to come in this last hour. We are talking closets, comedians, and clowns. Speaking of which, funny man Shane Dashen, who is you a clown, do you know? He's really going to go clowns, for you like, now. Clowns. He's going to go for you. Uh, Shane Daniel Byrne talks school X and taking the mick out of Ireland AM.
That's coming up at 9.45. Easily done, to be fair. Brian Lloyd's got movies on his mind this morning. Brian, what are we going to be talking about? Uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about Apocalypse Clown, which is a new Irish comedy. We're going to be talking about Denzel Washington back for The Equalizer 3. And we're going to be talking You Are So Not Coming to My Bat Mitzvah, which is on Netflix. Rolls off the tongue, that one, doesn't roll, it? Just, 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 just flows right off it. But it's actually a really fun uh, comedy okay. that's on oh, Netflix. Good. Okay. okay, great. Good. Looking forward to that. Thank you very much, Brian. Uh, Alan's stocking up on these his school supplies for the start of term, Al. Go back to school. <laughs> Kim, Do you find that picture? Kim from Assorted <laughs> Affairs talking all things organisation this morning. And as a mum, you actually possess a label maker yes. in your home. I have many. That's you what I do for a job. Makers. What are we talking about? This We're morning? talking about game changers to just speed up that morning routine or just, you know, get the house back in order. It's been a bit oh. wild this summer. There's mothers and fathers <laughs> all across the country going, thank you for yeah, this. Yeah, looking We're around looking. the house. Yes, yeah. Stick around for this later on. No. A label maker yeah. for a birthday. No, you can't. Can't. no. Oh my God. After the, after the Hoover for Christmas, you cannot get her a label maker for her Very birthday. Very practical. Great right present. Now, he is the teacher's pet this morning. Derek's in school. How are you getting on, Derek? <laughs> I think I am the teacher's pet. Anyway, welcome down here to Loretto Junior School. We're in Cronin's Head County, Dublin, right across the morning, guys. SNA teacher Anne Baker is with us. Anne, how are the nerves? <laughs> They're not too bad, Derek, I have to say. Um, it's great to welcome the children back. It's lovely to start off a new year, new children getting the children that we have already had back to us. Um, and already busy. Very busy, very busy. Um, a lot goes on behind the scenes before we open up. And um, we're all ready. We're just excited to have them back. It's, um, it's a wonderful school. We have amazing teachers. Um, we have an early intervention class. We have an ASD class. And an awful lot of work is put into making sure that all the children are looked after. All right. Am I the teacher's pet? Um, I don't know about that, Derek. <laughs> Could be by the end of the day. I'll work at her. I'll work at her. Thank you, uh, no Miss Baker. Problem. Back to you in the studio. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. You need to be chill to handle Irish weather. That's why Chill sponsor weather updates on Virgin Media. Thank you very much, Ger. We're live here from Loretta Junior School in Cromwell, South County Dublin. Before we get into weather, quick hello to the two of the busiest women in the country at the moment, Colette and Rose. Good morning to you, Rose. Good morning, Rose. Derek. A busy morning for very you. Very busy morning this morning. All the new children starting and some of them crying, some of them happy. Yeah, and a busy one for you. Oh, yes, yes, without a doubt, yeah. Are you looking forward to being back now? I am, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and of course, uh, by the way, you have kids, you have your own... Uh, four children. You have four little, four little babas and uh, then you... Seven, have, seven. You have seven. How many grandkids? Uh, uh, nearly 20, yeah. Oh, 20, 20 yeah, grandkids. Yeah. Can I give them a big wave there? Yeah, and all mine as well. And all yours as well. All right. Catch me with the bloody <laughs> stick. <laughs> Off you go, girls. Thanks right, so much for right. chatting to right. this morning. You couldn't make it up. Anyway, we're getting past nine o'clock here together. A quick look at weather and it is a wet start. In fact, out there this morning, plenty of heavy rain now crisscrossing the island. So stay nice and dry in that westerly airflow. Now across today, in fact, we will see some heavy rain through parts of the west, clearing up as the day goes on. But that makes your bright spells and scattered showers. Top temps are 16 to 21 and into tonight then, we're going to see some western showers Elsewhere, it will clear out. So we will see dry, clear patches develop as we feed our way into your Friday morning with some patchy mist, a little taster of fog as well as we edge into the 1st of September with overnight lows no lower than 7 to 13 degrees. So that's how we're shaping up for now. We'll be back again live here from Crumlin at 9.35. You need to be chill to handle Irish weather. That's why Chill sponsor weather updates on Virgin Media. Now, you know the way we've got a day for everything? Of course we do. There is a cinema day. It is on its way. Now is the perfect time to sit back and enjoy the latest offerings. We're sending you all out into the cinema. Yeah, so join us now with his reviews on what you've got to watch at the cinema. And, of course, streaming uh, this weekend as well is film fanatic Brian Lloyd from entertainment.ie. Good hey. morning to you, Brian. Um, so national... here for cinema. Like, yeah, one of the best. Year. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, so it's this Saturday, National Cinema Day is happening. All tickets are for... Foot. Four flips. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, doing this. What are you doing? You're doing your it like finger. Inglorious Bastards. Yeah, like I was doing it. Inglorious yeah. Bastards way of yeah, doing it. That's the tree the, and then the it's, Michael Fassman. Then he does that way, yeah. yeah. Well, that's um, coming off the back of what's been a pretty epic. Like, Barbie is the yeah. highest gro Barbie. grossing Irish film ever. Yeah, 8.8 .8 million, yeah. Toppled uh, Avatar after 14 years. So, yeah, if you want to go see Barbie this weekend, you can what? go see it. Four quid. 
<laughs> four, one, two, three, four, um, four. That's okay. nice. That's, yeah. that's, that's or else, that's if you value. want a bit more drama, you could go and see Denzel in yes. the Equalizer 3. Yeah, so this is the uh, third, obviously, of the Equalizer ones. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> no, but I mean, it's gas because like you're watching this and it's like there's absolutely... There's nothing particularly imaginative about it, but it's actually still pretty good. That's the thing. Like, it's watching He's just crazy. That's it. And we were talking off air, like, you love Man on Fire, love that it. film with Dakota Fanon. He re-teams with her in this. She plays this CIA analyst that he teams up with to take down the Camorra. Um, he's now living in Italy, trying to retire, trying to kind of get away from his violence. But sure enough, the violence drags It's lovely to in. see them together, though, isn't it? After That's Man it on is, Fire. Yeah, after so many years, yeah. And, like, and to be fair, like, they actually do have a pretty good dynamic. Like, Can you bring us up to date? Because obviously there's been the Equalizer 1 and 2. And Tommy sure. was like, how why, How did they get Denzel to through money? They money. threw a bunch of money at him. Money. But the fact is, is that Denzel Washington is never in a bad movie. He's no. just amazing. So where are we with the Equalizer 3? So the Equalizer 3 was, is it's basically, like, the, the, it's based on a TV series. And the film is very much of the same ilk. So he plays this retired CIA yeah. assassin. He helps people to get into trouble. In this film, he was on a mission in Sicily. He gets shot in the back and then he is recuperating in this small little village in Naples called Altamont. He's taken in by the local people, decides that maybe this is where he's going to settle down, but then sure enough to come or find him. He's got to go back into his violent way. got to go back. Yeah. Uh, we have a clip of it. Let's yeah. take a little look. Nine seconds. That's what I'll give you to decide your fate. That me. What did you do back home? Government work. I'm retired, man. Or you. Who is that? My banny. <laughs> because of these people, I'm beginning to understand real people. Oh. And I'm starting to believe. This is where I'm supposed to be. What happens here happens in many towns. The mafia. They're like cancer. No cure. Whatever it is you and your friends do, do it somewhere else. Are you warning me? I'm preparing. Oh, man, I love Denzel. Yeah. So and that's good. it. Like, it's one of those films that you go into it, you know exactly what you're going to get. It's 100 minutes of Denzel Washington absolutely violently brutalized. Pulverizing people. Like, literally, there's the opening scene, he gets the gun, puts it into a guy's eye socket, and then shoots another guy out the back of the head. So, like, oh. be prepared for violence. Is, prepared. It, is, it, yeah. it's, is it over the top violence? So, yeah. actually, like, that, and, gra and graphic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, but, I mean, it, to be fair, like, I think, like, it's 16, so there's no fear of, like, little kids going in to see no, this no. or something like that. But I think if you're squeamish, it might be, you know, you might want to give it a miss. But it has been like that in one and two. Yeah, 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 exactly. Over the top. Yeah. Exactly. So you know Sometimes, what you're like. Sometimes, yeah, I wonder it's too much. Anyway, listen, uh, what do you what do you, you give it out of five? Three out of five. Three out of five. Okay. It's good, like it's good crack. Denzel like. Washington. It's, can't go wrong. Just like. Sit down and watch Denzel. Does what it says yeah. on the tin. Uh, now, next one, Apocalypse Clown. Yeah. Irish movie. Irish comedy, yeah. Weird Irish comedy, yeah. So what's going on with this is, is that there is a solar flare which destroys all electronics in Ireland. Uh, this comedy troupe, or not comedy troupe, but um, this trio, troupe of clowns, uh, are setting off to a funeral. And then along the way, they kind of have to, I suppose, navigate the apocalypse and then try to make their way to this funeral of this uh, clowning legend. Uh, and, yeah, and that's basically what's clowning going on. Oh, OK, clowning legend. Now, the fellow who's the star of this, he was on the 6 o'clock show the other night. Yeah. And he's from Afterlife. He was... Yeah, he's Brian the, Earl. Yeah. Or, sorry, David Earl, sorry. Yeah. It's so funny what he looks like in real life. You know the way you were watching him? He had his Patagonia hat on. Cool. He looks so cool. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Mad in, he's mad in, um, in this. So, it, it is set in Ireland. Yeah, it's set in Ireland. Ireland. Yeah, they even slag off Ireland AM. Not just the only ones, yeah. How dare you? How they? dare you? Who's him? Yeah. No, he's not. It, it's not Tebow, Earl Tebow. It's just you. Oh. It's me. Yeah, it's you, yeah. <laughs> oh, well. It's, you. it's me. Yeah. Who's me? Uh, oh, Tara Flynn. Tara Flynn. Tara Flynn. Yeah. I'll be talking Tara to Tara Flynn later yeah. on now about Obviously, that. big fans of the show, of course. Yeah, uh, exactly. Listen, we have a clip of Apocalypse Clown. Let's take a quick look. <laughs> In a world on the brink of chaos, as darkness takes hold, Three heroes emerge with big hearts and even bigger shoes. The world has gone dark. There's something big going on here, and if I'm right, it's bigger than all of us. Me and her have got a history and a future, by the looks of it. Oh! Did I read the moment wrong? Everything is obsolete except us. The world is ours now! This is our chance to win back the woman that I love. 
If I don't make it out of there, tell the world I died with dignity. You want us to lie? Well, no. Just implied I was wearing trousers. OK, so that is Apocalypse Clown. What yeah. are you giving it? Two and a half out of five. Like, it's it's pretty weird in parts. It doesn't really kind of resolve a lot of the story in it. Okay. But it's worth a watch, definitely. If you like kind of alternative comedy, it's definitely worth a watch. And great to have okay. an Irish movie filmed in Ireland. Yeah. Irish actors, like, you know, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and like for, like, yeah, for a comedy that's, you know, not generic, couldn't be described mm. as generic at all. It's actually trying something to do there. something different, yeah. Uh, Some we of the were, scenes there look great. We were talking to Roisin Gallagher. There's a new programme, her programme, 7th of September, earlier on, called The Lovers on Sky Atlantic. But you've got another programme for us, for us now. It's Screaming. called You Are So Not Invited to My Bat Mitzvah. Bat Mitzvah, yeah. So this is on Netflix. This is a film, actually. Oh, and it's a film, sorry. Oh, it's a film, yeah. And it's basically Adam Sandler uh, doing oh, the this is the one with his daughter. Yes, all, his two daughters and his wife. So oh, wow. just total family affair going on here. So what's going on is that uh, his Adam Sandler's young daughter, uh, Sonny Sandler, uh, she no Sadie Sandler. Sadie Sandler. Yeah, yeah, Sadie Sandler, and then Sonny Sandler is the elder one. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I got them mixed up. So uh, Sadie Sandler is about to have her bat mitzvah with her friend, yeah. uh, played by. Or sorry, her name is Lydia Rodriguez. The two of them are kind of you know been friends all the way through middle school, but then of course uh, Lydia goes off with the cute boy Andy which then drives a wedge between the two of them and then they have to try to kind of work it out before they have their bat mitzvah. Um, I was not expecting this to be good, I'll freely admit that. Yeah. I kind of ignored it and then I started reading reviews of it and they all said it was brilliant. And then I watched it and it actually is brilliant. Oh, is, yeah. is Sander on form in this? Did he, he wrote it as well, didn't he? Yeah, Adam yeah. Sandler, no, he didn't write it, he produced, produced it, it. But, but like he is kind of like playing Kind of like almost a version of himself, heightened version, heightened version of himself. Yeah. Like he's kind of like roaring at his kids and all the rest of it. Like it's that very kind of like New York comedy kind of thing. Okay. Um. But yeah, he's actually brilliant, and his wife is brilliant. Is he and... funny in it? Yeah. No, okay. he totally is. Like Good. there's a brilliant scene in it, which I think you might appreciate, uh, Tommy, okay. where he's like basically like roaring at his kids <laughs> for like <laughs> kissing a boy in the synagogue. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like looking in the mirror. Yeah, there you go. No, <laughs> but it is. It's, 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 uh, it's very, I like, it's, I mean, I would imagine that, like, people with kids at that age would recognise a lot in it because, you know, they're not yet adults, but not yet children. Yeah. So, like, they're trying to kind of, like, that awkward middle phase of yeah. their lives kind of stuff. And when he's on form, he's on form. What are you yeah. giving this one? Four out of five. Four out of five. Yeah. It's on Netflix. You are oh, so good. not invited to my bat mitzvah. Brian, what's your entertainment value? Thank you. Alexander, love it. Thank you very much, Brian. Good to see you again. Now, after the break, we're going to uh, talking organisation recommendations to give you inspiration. Thank you, Shirley. Hello, welcome back. It is September tomorrow. September tomorrow, lads, meaning the summer holidays are over. <laughs> Will you get up? She's very tall. Will you this get morning. up? I'm wearing very high shoes, okay? <laughs> and it's back to books, bags, and lunch boxes. So very stressful. Yes, for and I'm sure a lot of you are at home feeling that this week. Now, Sorted of Affairs Kim Fitzgerald is here to show us how to stay organized for those Hello. stressful school mornings. You're a mother of two. Yes. You know all about this, yeah. the stress levels. Been grand all summer, and now you're back to the routine. <laughs> the routine's out the window, the house is upside down. <laughs> And you don't know where anything it is. It is. And you know what? You kind of prepare for it. You're like all through August getting ready. But then the week hits. I know. And you get to Friday. And, and like, it's like, you know, all through summer, you're like, yeah, go up and get dressed. It doesn't matter what they put on. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, they have to make sure they have their PE uniform. They have yeah. their swimming gear ready. Yeah. You've got, you know, yourself. So, so you're going to start all, us off. And just a, a simple thing like the bathroom routine in the morning. Yeah, exactly. It's just what I always say to people is try and think of those pain points, like those annoying times in the morning or in the evening okay. that really cause you the most stress and try and fix them, try and organise them a little bit better. So say for first thing in the morning, I've just done a little basket here. So this could be sitting into your little drawer in your sink or on a shelf in your sink. And we've got the toothbrush, we've got the face cloth, we've got the hair stuff. So, you know, wash your face, brush your teeth and do your hair. So you just have it all, all there. All in one spot. Like it so could even- not shouting it could where's even, that, where's Exactly, that? it could even be downstairs in the kitchen. A lot of our clients actually would have the hair stuff downstairs and it just saves you going, will you run up and get your hair brushed and then come back down to me, you know? So yeah. again, 
again, it's just trying to make things happen faster. But it's also empowering the child to be like, that's your responsibility. Oh, 100%, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, they can check it before they go to bed, brush their teeth before so they go to bed and set it up. And set it up themselves. Set it up themselves. You have a little you have a little pair of socks, you have a little bit of shampoo, a little bit of your brush, everything. Whatever it is. Every house is different. So whatever yeah. it is that you need first have thing in the morning. Have that in your bathroom. Have it ready to go. Time. Or the kitchen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, I suppose one thing about summer is that, you, as you said, you can wear whatever you want to, whatever. We're back to school. Most, most schools have, have uniforms. Uniform. Some of them don't. Kind of but, Some of them don't, of yeah. course, educate together. Enough. But there will be days of the week where you're going to need certain things. So you might need, like, your football gear, or you might need your swimming gear, for instance. Now, we've just used these as a little example. So it, it changes a, a rail into a shelf, and they've, like, little cubbies. Now, obviously, I've labelled them. Obviously. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't have to. Like, so depending on the age of the child, so, you know, if they're older, they'll be able to read and, and gauge this really well. If they're younger, what you could do is just the bottom cubby could be just the one that they grab from every day, and then each day you just make you sure just you fill it yourself. Yeah, or, yeah. Or, the, or the night before that it's their job to fill it you know that kind of way so these are really handy like if you put children's clothes on a hanger especially at a certain age they're just gonna like whip it off and if you've gone to the trouble of ironing the shirts which I'm allergic to but I do do it yeah and then you know they're all but of a sudden at the bottom of the wardrobe better then is it not folded it's... you get creases in it no ah sure listen they'd be That's fine they be fine roll it roll it roll but it. the idea is like everything is together so you can do like little parcels almost and like so I've got socks in here I've got pants in here so everything she needs so I have a three so year old so can you just home. open that and show us then Go on. So, like, so, yeah. so what have you got in there so that's so a jumper this is, is her it? uniform oh, so uniform. this is it's literally this so oh. you've got your leggings you've got your t-shirt you've got your socks you can put your pants you can put your vest so that everything is together in there so instead you know of I mean? trying where's the pants exactly. where's the socks you, again it's all because there. That, that's probably something that gets shouted at you in the morning is yeah. no like socks morning, I've no yeah. so spend a little bit of time on a Saturday and a Sunday do you want to come over to my house and roll pants absolutely <laughs> I'm going Monday, over to sort Tuesday, Alan's Wednesday, floor Wednesday, drove as well. Yeah, I have a floor <laughs> drove. We were talking about my floor drove. But label, I mean... A lot of people I feel like home... I'm going to go home short a couple of label no, makers. No, but a lot of people today. at home would be going, ah, come on, are she, you serious? She's just raised her label maker. Label, Listen. Labels, labelling things. Labelling things. It's amazing. Like, well. A lot of people buy those stickers for their school uniforms and the school oh, yeah. bags, OK? Yeah. You're paying money for those every year. You invest in a label maker and that's it. You're sorted. <laughs> Well, why do um, you need a label maker? Because everything needs to be labelled. Like, you know, the inside of the school bag, every item of clothes. If you send something to school and it doesn't have a label on it, it's less likely it's to make its home. way home. We lost a cardigan for three months last year in school and it did eventually make its way home her because her name was, was on, it. on it. Do you know what I mean? So it does save... But the, the labels not fall off? Are they like, no, they're like really good. They're really good. They're really, really good. They're really strong. I like, can see it staying yeah. on that, but like on a jumper on or something. On lunchboxes and stuff. No, you'd be surprised. And now, on jumpers and stuff now most of the school uh, uniforms this is Kiva's now most of the school uniforms have it where you can just ride it on right it. Oh, right. do you know what I mean yeah. but it's important whether it's an actual label maker you're using or just literally old school pen um, make sure you label as many things as possible yeah and I do know people who would you know have a moment thinking of a label maker do you know it just they just like it Tommy wants it's one. Tommy, no. Yeah. Tommy, Tommy might want one. Well, we Shoot. were hoping that he'd get one for, like, honestly, for Lucy, just on a Friday, rather yeah. than her birthday. I'll sort that out for her birthday. Shoes are a big thing. Shoes are a big one. Yeah, again, especially when they're young. So these, again, are pages. She's three. She's in preschool. So there's a little hack. I actually seen it on the newborn nanny's page. She's really cool. And I don't know if you can see inside that. So it's Paige's name, but it's cut in half. Yeah. Um, so basically she can tell the difference. So she puts it on the ground and she pairs she it up and she'll her help, name, help so her. So it helps her. She knows that the P -A -I good, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Because she can foot. I mean she can spell her name. She knows the P, she recognise yeah. the P. So it's just a little thing so to help. Of right or you left. could do, you know, you could do a picture and do a smiley face, half a smiley face on one can side and that? the other. I don't know if we can get in that. It's concept. hard to this one here is P A I and then there's G E in this one. So is that the go, know go what to, to one do. there? <laughs> and down. Hand modelling, but it's Hand very modeling. clever. Again, I can't. Yeah, it's, yeah it, you can it, sort of see it. You can just so clever little it's, things again, like Again, it's a time saver. So instead of her walking out with one shoe yeah. on the now, wrong foot, the school bag. I'm packing the school bag <laughs> because you, no matter, there's always something left at home. Is there? Always something left at home, and then so, left at school. Yeah, <laughs> see, it's just the thing. So just trying to like get it ready the night before. Start the routine so that when they come in from school, that they take everything out, the school bag, the jacket goes back in a designated spot. So again, the next morning, you know where it is. Yeah. Do you know that kind of way? Again, label everything. Label. And then... Get them to take out the lunch they haven't eaten. I don't. Nothing worse than a Friday. Oh, yeah. yeah, mine don't. Yeah. I know. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
There's a little zippy pocket in here that you have and it just has a little label for notes. So you get letters home from oh, school. Yeah, and you so get that things. goes in. So teach that. them, you know, oh, it has to go in there and then you have to deliver that to me. Again, depending on the age, the older ones should be better at this, but the younger ones especially, oh, it'll yeah. get shoved in the bag. So, so stick it in there oh, look, and make it their job. Yeah. You know, oh, there's something here I have to okay. deliver it to you. Especially, you know, big important things like we're that green you, exactly. to school no. tomorrow. The, <laughs> the crunch time breakfast. Breakfast. The mayhem at the breakfast table, especially if there's two or three kids. Exactly. Yeah. So set up a breakfast station and get them involved. OK, so whether it's a low press or a low drawer that they can access, they can open, they can take out their cereal, they can take out the bowls, spoons, all that kind of stuff and get involved. Again, right. depending on the age, start them small, but they can literally, just, yeah, two so and three, they can take the bowls out. Down, take yeah. the bowl out, get their cereal Exactly, out. pour the cereal and then maybe mum or dad. Everything and things like this. I do, because then I know when. I just reckon my cereal. Reckon cereal. <laughs> anyway, but the kids are going to be doing that. It's going to be all over. It will. It will be all over the place. <laughs> but at least I know. Say, for instance, if you have a child who's who will only eat the one thing. A lot of people have fussy eaters at yeah. home. But using these clear containers, I know. You know, on a Wednesday morning, and it's gone low. I need to buy another that. pack. Oh, Otherwise, no one's having breakfast the next day. If you're taking Fair out a, bo a box and it's gone. Plus, they just rip the boxes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's all there. Okay. Listen, Kim from Assorted Fair, people can find you online for all of your organisation tips. And we've got some very exciting news for you at home. Kim and Lynn from Assorted Fair are coming to sort your life out. So if you've got a room that needs decluttering, the ladies from Assorted Fair, they are going to be on the job. All you've got to do is email photos of the room that you would like organised. They're going to come over to your house, as well as the reason that you think that you should have them come to your house. If you email them to us at irelandam at virginmedia.ie. Just go in, take the pictures now. I'm sending a picture. Yeah, of the floor drop. Of the floor <laughs> drop. Uh, winners will then be chosen. And before you know it, a sort of affair will be on your doorstep. And of course, you must be willing to appear on air because we'll Are be going with you. I might go as well. Okay. And we go and film it all yeah. and see how it's all sorted out. So head to our social pages after the show for more details. Indeed. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Really appreciate it. Now after the break, comedian Shane Dan Byrne talks gigging and giggles. We'll be back very shortly. See you in a few minutes. He does on our You're very welcome. Back now, sketch comedian turned stand-up Shane Dan Byrne rose to fame when his lockdown videos gave us all a bit of comedic relief, just what we needed during the pandemic. That's so much. Before we chat to the wonderful Shane, let's take a look at his fresh take on, what do we do, the resurrection of Jesus? Yeah, let's go with that. You won't believe us after walking across the door here. Jesus Christ almighty, why do we do it? Why do we have kids? I know, the stress they put you through. Yeah, he's in now. No, no, he was, no, he didn't come to me for it. You know where he was? He was over in Mary Magdalene's. Oh yeah, first port called Mary Magdalene, wasn't it? Thinks he's God's gift. He's here now, he's going in for a shower. Don't be in there too long. I said we'd make a feast just to do something, just to mark it, kind of. Um, so Joe's gone down to get a leg of lamb. Yeah. Why not, yeah. Um, but yeah, this, no, he was over with his father. That's right, yeah, three, you think, you think he would have sent Gabriel at least to let me know. <gasps> I know. Yeah, well, I have to cook myself. That's the next thing now. That'll be the next stress. Yeah. You know, I'm, no, I'm going up. Well, that's the assumption anyway. <laughs> well done. Well I done. Mind. Well done. That is so good. But to be fair, all the videos, like, they're just so good. Like, it was, for you to do those, like, where are you finding that sort of, like, material or whatever? Sometimes they, like, I, people say that, where'd you get your ideas? Yeah. You know what I mean? But sometimes it was just like, I don't, I don't know where that one came from. Like, I don't know where I thought the idea of that. <laughs> I do, I like religion stuff, I like Catholicism stuff, <laughs> but I could not tell you where that came in. What about? I don't know where it comes from. Sometimes you just do it. I found that phone underneath the cooker in our house. There was a phone with the thing that obviously someone used years ago yeah. and stored it under the cooker. So I think I was like, I wanted to do something with that phone, and that's what that came up with. But even the costume. Just, the costume like, is, I was so chuffed with. I made it out of a pillowcase, and then I got like a sports, t you like it? Sports nice. t shirt. <laughs> and I rolled that up, and I was like, okay, this is beautiful. And like, exactly. with long hair, but kept my own moustache. Well, yeah, yeah obviously. Yeah, yeah. But sure, yeah. Mary wouldn't have had any Rooming appellation been back in the in day. Days, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this morning, we have been sitting down here mm. watching your version of Ireland AM, yourself and Tony Cantwell. It's on YouTube. Uh, no. Get the. We may step off. aside. Yeah, get the back. T U T F. Oh, sorry. Can we, yes, can we okay. take it? Do yeah. we have a clip of it? Can we take a look at this? Now, it's the new internet sensation. It's the new Is the Dress Gold or Blue? Is he saying Yanni or Laurel? Well, we've scored an exclusive here this morning, and we have the latest sensation. 
Is this a mother of three, age 38, or is this a ghost? Let's take a look. I see a mother. I'm kind of somewhere in between. Some, the way I, depending on where I sit, yeah, sometimes I see, sometimes I see both. Well, I'll tell you what, text in and let us know what you see. And while you're at it, this mole, is it benign or the bad one? Mm. Text in about both. Text in. Let us know. Uh, uh, I forgot that one altogether. I'm not sure enjoying that myself. I forgot all about that. We've watched that whole oh, episode man. this morning. Uh, Killian, Killian so, Sunderman's background. <laughs> so you the say it's our version artist. of Ireland AM. I, I, I mean, it's. I never said it. We never said it was Ireland AM. You never said it never was said Ireland explicitly. AM. But you know, write what you know, but uh, and write about what you love. <laughs> Can I, I say we all sat there this morning going, God, the set's lovely. Uh, it's great. We're oh, yeah, we, we need to get some together fruit together. on the table here. Yeah, as well. you have empty tables. We had fruit all sorts of things going so on. Are you I mean, telling I'm me you're pretty... Alan? Huh? Are you telling me you're Alan? I, I, <laughs> I, it's my own character. I've written the character. You know, you play a version of yourself. I'm pretty sure we did a segment on that. <laughs> is it a ghost or a, is it a, ghost or a yeah. woman? I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, oh like, to be fair, but that is born in television. Like, that is television. I mean, it kind of writes itself. You make it look so or... easy, and I tried it, and you know what? It is. <laughs> it is. It's fine. I could do it. You were just back from... You went to the Edinburgh Fringe, <laughs> yes. which is, like, it's the pinnacle for so many people to get there, get your name known. Yeah. But it's it's a it's a heavy month. How do yeah, you get on? It, it's kind of the centre of the world for yeah. comedy. You have to, it's a big meat market. You have to go. Um, it, you do a show every single day. You give out flyers for your show every single day. Um, you're you're hitting the streets trying to get people to come to your show, and it's relentless. So it's an hour long show. Comedy is usually stand up's usually 10, 15, 25 minutes, something yeah. like that, a couple of times a week. But this was like every single day. So the relentlessness of it becomes just like you get used to it. Like it's like any fitness kind of. You're like, okay, now I'm doing this, or people who have kids and they go, okay, I'm exhausted, but I can still go to work or whatever. Yeah. You do find a way to go, okay, it's fine. But sometimes you're like, my God, I wish I was just not doing this. It's, I was sick of my own <sighs> voice. And then also handing out thousands of pieces yeah. of paper with your own face on it. Like it was really... Yeah. Yeah, crazy. So really, yeah, yeah. But it worked. Like, it was a 12 nights sold out. No, way more than 12 sold out. 12 was my biggest in a row. Oh, in so a row? So I did 29 just... shows. I did two extra shows, which was really cool. So I did my show every day at 5.40. And then on the Saturday, last two Saturdays, I did extra shows, such as The Demand. Wow. And they were at 11 p.m. And that was much more exciting because it was much boozier and much more rowdier or whatever. And it was okay. a whole different... It felt like doing a different show. So that was like a real relief to kind of try something different. Did you try something different? Did you Not really. You just kind of have a different vibe to it. Like, and you had... I had a drink. Usually I just have water, very <laughs> profesh. Um, and then I did another night as well with a comedian called Vittorio Angeloni, where you go unplanned, off the cuff it's called, and you take things out of a hat that the audience have suggested. Oh, so you can't do like any improv. prepared material. Vittorio's from Belfast, is he? Yeah, is yeah, it, yeah. He's fantastic. Wow. He's yeah, killing yeah, yeah. it. He's absolutely... He sold out before the thing even started, so whatever. Did he's, he? He's great. Whatever. Oh, whatever. <laughs> whatever, um, Vittorio. Uh, uh, but yeah, well, that was really cool, and that was a nice... Those things you do extra bits can be the nice relief yeah. to do other things that are you're like, OK, sick of the same old stuff every single day. Yeah. Know? Yeah, it's still though, because you were saying I had to stop you know, talking about the fact that I was set. Because you were set, like it was, I was watching you online going, he sold out again. Well, I Incredible. sold out the second day, and that was so exciting that I posted that straight away. I was like, oh my God, thank God, because the first show was pretty rough. Like, yeah. it was supposed to be 55, 56 minutes. I did it in 45 minutes, oh, and I was gosh. gone. There was about three people there. I felt sick. But then you could, once you had one big one, then that was enough. That's enough to kind of get you going. And then you're kind of like, okay, I mean, you're in the swing of it, and you just yeah. kind of start enjoying it. And then you kind of get used to like some shows you don't love as much as others. And then you just go, yeah, it was fine. It doesn't matter. And you just kind of you have to be resilient. Yeah. That's what it teaches you loads. Resilience. Well, comedy you have to be resilient to any I think stand-up is one of the most mm. difficult things to do. Mm. But like the Edinburgh, it's like kind of like it's an amazing opportunity. But the, was there many Irish over there? Or are you kind of going over there to put yourself out for agents? Like what's the kind of You kind you hope for a bit of that. You hope for a bit of attention from agents or from you know, that used to be a big thing of TV people. There's less of that now. Okay. Um, but there is a bit of that. But Irish people being Irish people instantly have a WhatsApp group with 78 people in it and they're talking to other going, Can anyone come see? I've got a reviewer in, can you come see my show? And everyone oh, supported that's... each other like throughout it. So like that's what Irish people are like, I think. Irish abroad will look after each other whatever and the comedian scene is a bit like that as well obviously because like even on the g get up to fair yes, yes. show like you have lots of irish comedians in that which is great yeah yeah, yeah. and you'd be supportive of your pals you have yeah. your gang or whatever but in, in comedy you tend to know everyone because it's a small town it's a small country you know you tend to do know everybody a little bit yeah yeah, yeah. So your pals it does feel like everyone everyone does feel like they know you like when i mention your name because of the videos you know the beautician videos and everything yeah. like that in lockdown everyone's like oh god yeah like they they, they really do 
you feel like they know you? Do they recognize you with the with the wig off and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, like that it? still feels new to me, the idea of people knowing me at all. I still feel like, like I feel like some ways I'm doing stand-up years because COVID happened in the middle. I know. There was, I was doing stand-up, then COVID, then back back to stand-up. But it feels like, I don't, it's actually not long. I'm not doing stand-up that long, but it feels like I'm in this game years. Yeah. Years! I'm some kind of veteran or whatever. Are you going to use the same show again now for the Dublin Fringe? That's obviously coming up uh, if we want to go to the Dublin but Fringe. But he's gay. Shane Dan Byrne. 20. He's gay. But he's gay. Uh, yeah, it's the same show. It'll be a little bit different because for an Irish audience and, you know, uh, I don't have to explain everything I'm talking about like I do <laughs> for the Scottish people or the English people or Americans or whatever. But, uh, yeah, similar show, same thing. So I'm, I'm actually dying to do it for Irish people now. I can't wait. Like, Are you doing... Because I know when you were supporting Amador and you did the essay, the Irish... The, the, uh, I don't the know. Where that, that's not in the show. Um, if you I'm get a do... chance to go and see Shane. It's one of, it's honestly so exciting to see you do your thing. We've been it's laughing amazing. at you all morning. Oh, well, thank you very much. Are so, I laugh at so you good. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the right reason. Brilliant. Thank you. Brilliant. Uh, and yeah, the Fringe is on from the 9th to the 24th of September if you want to go watch uh, Shane Danburn. Thank, thank you so much. We'll thank you. you. Thanks Thanks a 38 year old woman or a ghost. <laughs> now we've another busy show tomorrow. Uh, he's played Emmerdale's lovable character Paddy for more than 25 oh. years. Love him. Actor Dominic Brown joins us for a chat. A uh, journalist turned crime author Amanda Cassie tells us how reporting on the news has informed her latest terrifying tale. And MMA fighter Sinead K. O'Kavanagh and Denise uh, Keelholtz? Yeah, Keelholtz, <laughs> I think, will show us some, some practical self-defence moves for we'll women. We'll find so out tomorrow. Shane Danbury. Join yes. the weekend crew tomorrow from 7. Have a great weekend. We'll be back here on Monday. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> Read before you.